Where is the coleslaw? Where is it, dude? What are we talking about? Jeremy asked where the coleslaw was, and they think oh. it's funny. I didn't hear that. It was just because, because. It, was, it, was, it was. It wasn't so much the fact that he asked for the coleslaw. It was. It was like, where's the coleslaw? Really quietly, but like it was blatantly like everyone just heard it. Oh my god! Did you go to Hot Chicken Takeover? <laughs> no, we went to Kane's. No. Oh well, still good. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my god! Listen, hot take, hot chicken takeover is delicious, but it's so expensive for what it, it is. It is. I had it Thursday for the first time, and I cried because it was so good, and also my mouth was on fire. Sorry, can everyone okay, just say sorry. something? Sorry, I don't really understand quickly. what's happening with my fucking computer. Testing, testing. <laughs> that was fucking hilarious. Because someone, can everyone say something? And there was just like loads of noise, and then a break, and then Eric's going testing, testing. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Thank you, Eric. I, that really made my day. I try. <clears throat> and it's fine, yeah. Although, there I'm just, goes. I'm gonna say, I'm sorry, the first two minutes of this, <laughs> you might wanna just delete. It's just a lot of me laughing. Fair enough. Alright. Oh, I'm afraid it's the first ten minutes for me. <sighs> I've been recording for fifteen. God. <laughs> God fucking damn it. <laughs> fucking computer. Is it working yet? It's, I don't know. Right, I'm, I'm going to hit record now, so I'm recording officially. Okay. But Jesus Christ. Cool. Well, we've done all we can, <clears throat> presumably. I'm, I'm sorry this is taking so long. I'm incredibly frustrated. It's okay. It's, it's okay. No, it's my, 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 my computer just being a dick. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Oh, there it goes. All right, fine. We're good now. The real oh, question, is, the real question is, is, where's the first law? I think, I think we're done with that joke, Ed. Yeah. No. I will <laughs> run it into the ground. Ed, we're, we're done with the joke. Okay, guys. Uh, let's do the clap, shall we? I'm ready. Ready. One, two, three. Fine. Should we maybe do one more? <laughs> um. Yeah, one more, just for safety. Okay, wait, you know what I'm going to do very quickly? I don't need all of this. I'm going to start a new file no, real quickly so you don't get all of this shit. Yeah, we probably should. Just Because <clears throat> there's 15 minutes of crap you don't need on some of ours. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not starting oh, over. No. Sorry, my okay. computer will not. Yeah, it's it's not like uh, no save changes. Okay, starting now. Okay, cool. I'm recording again. All right. I'm starting again. All right, let's do another clap. One, two, three... Good. That sounded better. I did. Does it sound better? All right. So, some stuff went down last time. Um, mm -hmm. You mind refreshing us? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you basically took down uh, Oakenheart uh, and the fairy dust. Not so much smuggling as manufacturing and distribution ring. Um by blowing up their main base and lighting it on fire and killing a lot of people, including Oakenheart. Um, so all in all, a rousing success. Um, also, uh, Mouse decided to uh, reach out to their old friend Harper, and I think Bishop wanted to check in on uh, Teague. Good old Teague. Yeah, I was, you know... I don't totally hate him. <laughs> True. He's just the unluckiest guy. Poor Teague. I'm so sorry, Teague. <laughs> I'm so glad that we invented him. <laughs> um, before we get into the game proper, uh, so at some point you're going to go to the court and like we're going to take care of uh, what you guys get out of completing this mission. Um, so... Uh, just for mechanical purposes and to kind of get it out of the way, um, I'd like you to look at the rewards for the court, the the, the available claims for the court, um, and pick three and kind of put them in order of like what what your guys want the most and which one uh. you want the least, kind of. Can you can you send that link to us in uh, in roll twenty? Yes. Can you? Can you, also you know what I should do? That? I should load up roll twenty. Can you can you pin it? Uh, yeah, that's a good idea. 
I'll do that. Because that's the only document that we have that's not pinned right now, and that would be that would I'll make it, it so we don't have to. Oh, okay. Awesome. All right. Oh, I just pinned. Where's the coleslaw? Okay. Do not leave it. You better leave that. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. So, order of ones we want the most, the ones we want the least. Yeah, and just pick three of them. So, like your top pick, Doesn't your second choice, on the map. and your third choice. Uh, no, they should be in order on the map. <laughs> I think so. Okay. By the way, um... no. What I mean is they don't. So, like for the the claim the claim map, mm-hmm. could I pick something from the far right that we haven't approved no. anything yet? No, you'd have to. Not not unless you got the things that led to it, right? Right. Exactly. Okay, so just just either vouch magic or goblin market. Mm-hmm. And then you can I mean, continue uh, on from there. I do have a question. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, with magic gain one keyword, does that only work if we already have magic, or do we all gain magic? Uh, no, it's it makes it so that you have access to one keyword. Like, master- But without a second keyword, it wouldn't do anything. Uh, yeah, it wouldn't really do anything, unless you are already okay. a magician. Okay. Could it would give me magic. Yeah, the, the, honestly, yeah. as much as 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 weird as it sounds, I think magic gain one keyword just so that mouse can take object is would be so useful. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. That's my first pick. Yeah, cuz I mean, like having plus one die when learning spells would be okay, but gaining a keyword is huge. <laughs> I'm also okay. going to say yeah. I think we should end up with obscuring wards because that's yes. amazing. <laughs> I was thinking, oh, definitely. Know, magic, gain one keyword, secret tunnels, plus one D to engagement or for stealth plans, and then down to obscuring wards because boy, exactly how do we thinking. love to get heat, don't we? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. point yeah. sounds great, but like, not if we're like yeah, constantly being chased down. Obscuring wards. I think all of us. I think all of us can agree on all three of those. All three of those are dark. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you'll have to kind of gain them in order. Uh, so that means like your first pick will be gain one keyword, your second pick will be secret tunnels, and your third pick will be obscuring wards. Um, Can our fourth pick be hedge paths? Because that's awesome. We only get three. Yes, you only get three right now. Um, but... Oh, we get three total. Yes. Oh dang! I wasn't even expecting that. Mm-hmm. Um, you probably will. Let me explain this a little bit. Um, so just for our listeners, what each of these do. Uh, magic gain one keyword uh, is it opens up a new keyword of magic, uh, presumably for mouse to use, uh, which increases their repertoire of spells. Uh, Secret tunnels gives plus one die to engagement rolls for stealth plans, uh, and obscuring wards gives minus two heat per mission. Um, So how this is going to work when you get to, when we get to it in the narrative, is that you will have the ability to get up to um, these three claims, um, but depending on kind of how your meeting with the court goes, uh, there could be problems so that you don't gain as much, um, just to kind of put some risk into it. Like, do do you guys understand that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Um, so without out of the way, uh, Let's take a look. Right, so um, before we get to that, uh, I wanted to look at uh, Teague and Harper. Um, so refresh my memory a little bit around Harper. Um, you, Why, again, is Mouse going to... is reaching out to Harper after all this time? Um, I think in this situation, um, I've been thinking about this since we played the game, and I think Mouse... Um, Mouse doesn't often get put into situations where they themselves is um, in serious danger. Mm-hmm. You know, they're usually in the background. They're usually on their computer. They're usually not in those situations. And 
our last session, Mouse had to disarm a bomb <laughs> and saw a very large stone man very, very close to uh, smashing them. And there were a lot of gunfire. Like, Mouse, Mouse experienced a lot of close calls in a very, very quick succession. And I think they began to think about their life and what mistakes they've made. And they wanted to make things right. Okay, so I um, mean, I feel like you're shitting on actor's life here, but like it was not bad. Calm down. <laughs> Everyone is entitled to their own <laughs> thing. Um, cool. Um, and how is uh, Mouse reaching out to Harper again? Just going to the, um, just going to visit. I think she's going straight. I keep saying she. God damn it! Cut that out. <laughs> uh, uh, they uh they're going to the um the youth home that Harper runs. Mm -hmm. Uh just in person. Just okay. go in there. All right, sounds good. Um... unannounced, like completely unannounced, no nothing leading up to it. Just heading on in. Just hey, it's been 10 years. What's up? Okay. Yeah, so cool. Um and so Bishop for Teague, um, is Bishop just going to drop by Teague's apartment or? Uh, I think I'm going to, yeah, I think she's going to stop by his apartment first to see if he's even there. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> yeah, I think that's where we'll start. She'll like knock on the door and like, if it's open, she'll just walk in. Okay. Um, if you guys are okay with it, I think we'll start with Bishop and Teague just because I don't think it'll take as long. And also, okay. it might lead into other things further down the end the line, but we'll see. Okay, so yeah, so Bishop, you roll up to Teague's apartment, uh, which you've been to before when it got ransacked and Teague got the crap kicked out of him. Um, when you, uh, you knock on the door, there's kind of like the sound of like rustling and like moving things very quickly. Um and like very softly, like the cocking of a gun, um, and then Teague nervously calls through the door. Who, who is it? Uh, hey Teague. No, no weapons. It's it's just me. I'm just coming to check in on you and see if you're okay. Please don't shoot me. Uh, through the door, he you can hear him sigh in relief, and he says, "Okay, all right. It's just Bishop." All right, so, sorry. Yeah, one sec. Let me let me unlock the door. And you hey, hear. Hey, you should get a quieter gun. <laughs> <laughs> he really needs to oil it. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't handle that. Uh, no. Uh, so you hear the sound of like unlocking and like chains being pulled off and like just a series of locks being turned. Apparently, he's added some more security to his door in the meantime. Um, he, like, he opens the door a little bit and, like, checks and sees that it's you and, like, looks around a little bit. And he's like, it's only you, right? There, you, you didn't see anyone else when you came here. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, nope, it's just me. I didn't bring anyone with me. I think she's got both hands up, like, sign of peace. Like, yeah, he he's put he he he's already like put the gun away. Uh, he's not like pointing a gun at you or anything. Okay. Um, but he he kind of nods and sighs and like grins in kind of a half-hearted way. Uh, you see, he still like has like some bandages and like <laughs> band-aids on him um, from like whatever the Illuminati did to him, uh, and he looks a, he looks a little bit roughed up, but. Um, Overall, he's fine. Um, so he opens the door some more, and he says, "Come on in, come on in." Um, I'm I'm glad you came. Actually, listen, we we kind of have to talk. And oh. uh, as you yeah, look, I go in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as you look around his apartment, you see he's it's kind of in a similar state of disarray, except it's obvious that like he's packing to leave. Like their suitcases kind of like spread on the floor and there's like stuff kind of like half heart haphazardly like shoved into them um and it looks like he's getting ready to leave town oh you're you're moving you're leaving he says yeah yeah i um 
I gotta go away for a while. Um, things have, uh, things kind of got a little out of hand, uh, with my job and, um, Glimwing and everything. And, um, there, uh, there might be some bad people coming for me, so I'm just, I'm just gonna go. Oh, jeez, T, um, I'm sorry that this happened to you, that everything's falling apart with Glitwing. He nods. Uh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> okay, he nods, uh, and he says, uh, he says, yeah, I mean, I guess it was inevitable at some level. I mean, Glimwing's already gone completely. No one knows what happened to them. Um, they skipped town, or whoever Oakenheart was working with got to them, but I don't... Yeah, I just... I, I'm, I'm worried I'm going to get mixed up in it, uh... So I need to, I need to get, I need to get gone. Well, oh my god! Um, I know, I feel kind of bad. Oh my god! <laughs> Offering, offer to protect him. I can move him, him with you. Him. Just give me a minute. Give me a minute. No, um, <laughs> I'm not ready for that commitment. Um, uh, also, <laughs> another thing I'd like to build into this. I mean, like it's a roommate. Uh, she already has a roommate, I think. I have a roommate. Yeah. Um, as Teague is talking to you, you can hear. Um, the voice you've been hearing more and more intensely, uh, kind of like your own negative thoughts talking back to you, telling you that you did this to him and like, you've ruined his life. And how could you do this to someone who trusted you? Oh God. Um, I think she like, is just like quiet for a minute. And I think she starts like picking up like, t-shirts off the ground and like folding them and like tossing them in a suitcase they're like well let me help you and and if there's anything me and my crew can do to help you to keep you safe you just you know reach out we'll be there he nods and he says yeah just um i don't know i mean if anyone comes looking for me tell them you haven't seen me I i've mean, never seen you in my entire life he kind of laughs. I will delete our Instagram photos of us together. He kind of laughs and he says, yeah, that, that might be a good idea, actually. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry it didn't work out with us, Bishop. I mean, I feel like we didn't really get a shot just because things have been so crazy. Yeah, our lives are c complicated. More complicated than I think either of us were ready for. Um, he nods kind of sadly, and then he goes back to kind of getting his stuff together and packing his suitcases. Okay, I'll help him out. We'll, like, put on some music and, like, make it a fun last night. Oh, okay. Oh. Why uh, do I suddenly like tea? <laughs> <laughs> My heart! <laughs> All right. <laughs> The heart wants what it can't have. <laughs> That's exactly it. Yep. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Okay. Sounds good. All right, so that's pretty much it for Teague then. Uh, let's go over to Harper. Teague got written out of the show. It's fine. I mean, he might come back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like knows. Lonely Man starts playing. <laughs> da na 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 na. He's gonna be the next big drug dealer we have to take down. Be like, King? <laughs> nah. <clears throat> what a twist! <laughs> what a twist, indeed. No, Teague is gonna get turned into some horrible monster. No, oh, oh my god! Oh my Come back god. with bolts in his neck. <laughs> what the hell, man? <laughs> Just be incredibly mean to this one character for no reason. Well, well no, I think this is, it's more being being mean to to bishop because like <laughs> like the next time we see teague he's like rampaging through the city yeah, like this was full hulk yeah he Rah! goes full hulk he can't control it and then and then bishop's got to make the choice I, oh man i don't feel like the stakes are so important that like bishop, <laughs> bishop would like feel bad for a minute and then probably just kill him <laughs> so. no but that's the thing like right as she's about to he recognizes her Bishop? Oh my god, why are you doing this? What is that voice? 
I that, feel that like was, this is that was my monster Teague voice. I feel <laughs> like this is in character for Steven, like when he finds <laughs> out that Teague is yeah. leaving town. <laughs> He's following her around the site, like through the little like <laughs> labyrinth and oh being like, Wow, and then this happens. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Well, he is a doctor, so yep. not a doctor. He's not, <laughs> not a doctor. All right. Um, all right. Yeah. Let's transition over to Mouse and Harper then. Uh, so yeah. So you're just going to kind of show up um, at this uh, group home thing, which we haven't really established. Like, it's like is is it like an orphan? Is it a big place? Is it like like how many? kids would there be i'm just trying to like <laughs> picture it in my mind well in my head it was always like so it, it's like a um <clears throat> it's it's essentially like a like a uh like a homeless shelter but specifically for youth okay um like and a, i think the so no, the about. idea well like uh, I think it serves a lot of kids uh, in part because of how much money Harper has and how much money uh, Mouse funnels to Harper without Harper knowing. Mm -hmm. um, so I think they have a lot of money to just kind of do what they need to do. So it's, it's like, it's really, really good for the kids that are there. Um, and I think it's one of those places like, obviously there are going to be some kids who think like, Oh, the kids who go to that place are, you know, hoity toity and everything. But I think generally the, the kids who, who are served by it are appreciative. Okay. Uh, Do we in, think in it's... part, because I, in part, I think because Harper knows, knows how to talk to them and, and help them because, mm. you know, they, they've been there. Right. Exactly. Um, we're thinking it's urban probably, right? Or like, it's not like yeah, Xavier yeah. Academy out in the countryside. It's like in downtown no, no, no. or something like that. I always imagined it as like, um, not like a skyscraper, but like a smaller building that they just kind of bought and they just turned it into this thing. Right. Like a, like a renovated, like almost like a, not a brownstone, but like that kind of style of building. Okay. Yeah, yeah, almost like a like it could be like you know how there's a lot of churches that buy those kinds of buildings and they just like yeah. turn them into like oh this, this is gonna be our it's like that but instead of turning into a church they turn it into like a place where kids can sleep and there's like a probably like a kitchen in there and some probably some some area where like they can just like you know do kid stuff. It's like Amy, in like yeah, the big sort of. yeah, <clears throat> mm -hmm. sort of yeah. Okay, I like it. <clears throat> um. All right. I did not name it, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Harper's home for wayward. I don't know. <laughs> Love it. Oh my god, the Harper home. Oh. The Harper home. Um, oh. Charles like Xavier that. School for gifted children. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, so just some background, um, because <clears throat> we talked about what uh. Harper's kind of been up to in the in the intervening ten years, and I imagine Mass would probably look into it a little bit now that they're getting ready to go see them again. Or do we want to do that all through, like? Um, well, I I think Mouse definitely kept tabs on Harper, um, mm -hmm. but I think they respect Harper too much to like get like to invade privacy, you know? Right. Gotcha. So so Mouse didn't like hack the Gibson on anything. But like, right, right. The, the only thing that they the only thing that they would do is probably put some protections in place so that anything that if anybody were to target Harper, they, it wouldn't work. Um, okay. But beyond that, Harper's not like keeping tabs and like what I'm sorry, Mouse isn't keeping tabs on like what Harper's spending her money on or like uh, anything like that. They're probably not probably not even looking at bank account history, which is unusual because you better believe that the four of you, three of you. <laughs> Uh, Mouse has like print offs of all your bank histories, like in their. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> how much? How much chocolate does one person need, Bishop? <laughs> <laughs> what uh? What what is what does Mouse find on on Stevens? 
a lot of things that mouse deletes so that if anybody were to do any kind of research, they would not appear in your yeah, bank yeah. history. Steven appreciates that. <laughs> what has mouse, mouse found on Acton? Steven's like, why am I not being arrested for buying C4 off the internet? And you're just like, because I'm helping you. Acton is just like, Acton's financial records. I, I, I get the idea that Acton is really bad with money because he keeps going bankrupt and like oh, overdrawing yeah. his credit cards. I like to imagine yeah, that, exactly that, like, Acton. that Acton absolutely <clears throat> keeps going bankrupt, but it, like he he never buys anything like super interesting. It's all just like really practical stuff. He just likes being prepared. <laughs> yeah, um, I also like, imagine that I need these grenades. <laughs> I also imagine that Acton has like a whole. Uh, like a bunch of things that he's just like signed up for for subscriptions that he doesn't actually yeah. use. Oh, so often as me. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, no, that's that's uh, very true. Yeah, that's yeah. Very true. You're still getting like a like <clears throat> like a geek box delivered to some apartment back in London. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like bothered to change. The only time what? the only time they ever get shut to, like the only time that they ever stop getting delivered is when you uh, run out of money and you have to open up another bank account. Yeah, <laughs> also, and turns them off. <laughs> yeah, also, like, I through, like through like looking at his transactions, there's just like a lot of like taking stuff out at an ATM because he just does a lot of it in cash. Mm -hmm. He's a bit old like that. Yeah, I like it. I love this. This is great. All right, we're learning something about everyone. Yay! Okay. Um. So in the intervening ten years, um, Harper's changed kind of quite a bit from the person you knew. Um. It appears that they were more invested, or they got more invested in their parents' company, uh, which I have decided to call Plume Tech, in case, unless you want to change that. No, I like it. That's good. Um, so they kind of took over running Plume Tech, um, and uh, they Harper kind of shows up occasionally in, like, uh, you know, Wired Magazine or Fortune or, like, articles about, like, 10 upcoming, like, women CEOs <clears throat> or, um, you know, uh, articles about, um, like, government contracts, stuff like that. Just, like, kind of surface-level stuff that you would expect someone, a normal person running um, a business to be involved in. Um, and there's So, like so, so... It, it you like it's it's not it wouldn't be like unheard of that somebody who's really into tech like uh like Acton might even know who she is right yeah like um plume tech has probably sold like some phones or something like that like they're not they're really, like nokia or something yeah they're not really a high tier player in anything um they're you know they're like a middle to low sized oh are they like htc yeah they're they're kind yeah. of a smaller like software focused company and that sort of thing um sorry to the htc listeners yeah sorry guys um there's also articles about uh the group home uh that she started and like you know there's occasionally interviews about it um and you know like once every year or so there's like a gala or some sort of event that she hosts and like rich people around Toronto come to, to support the, uh, the group home and the charities. Um, oh my God. Can we retcon and have it go, have it be that, that mouse is going to the gala. <laughs> sure. If you want, would, would mouse dress up that. for the gala or would mouse uh, just mouse. show up as mouse? I, I think mouse would, de would probably show up in like a tux or something. Um, but uh, actually, no. I think in this case, Mouse might actually wear like a dress. Hmm. And dress kind of femmy. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like, it's not very often that Mouse gets to do that. But everyone, yeah, every once in a while, why not? You know, Sounds in, fun. In my head right now, like, Mouse is wearing this, like, this amazing dress, but the dress is like mouse print on it. <laughs> oh my God. No, not that. No, I know. <laughs> in my head, it's in my head, when you were like a top, so I was like, I was like, <clears throat> I was just like, they have a little, like, like a mouse cufflinks, and now what I'm thinking about is you in a dress mm -hmm. with uh, like mouse stuff. I feel like, um, you know, here's what I'll say. Um, I think Mouse has gotten invited to the gala every single year because, like, not under Mouse's real name, but like because <clears throat> Mouse gives anonymously so much to the. Oh, I place. like that. That's good. And this is kind of the first That's time good. Mouse has decided to like actually like be like, yeah, sure, I'll be like Clarice Happington or whatever fake name I used for this. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, did you, did you say Clarice Happington? Is that your go-to fake name? That, that is my posh, rich person go- fake name. <laughs> I love it. That sounds, yes. that sounds like the fake British name I would use. That's Clarice Happington of the Concord Happingtons. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Exactly. I love it. I love it. Uh, but I think in this case, I think Mouse, um, just because, uh, it, to say it plainly, uh, though Mouse would never say this out loud, Mouse respects Harper a lot more than they respect any of anyone else that they know, um, just because of their history. But I think in this case, Mouse is starting to develop that kind of respect for the people that they're surrounding themselves with now. Mm-hmm. And I think if we're going to a gala, I think Mouse would probably invite the other three to, to, to attend. Oh. Uh, with, with the oh. understanding that they are to act normal. <laughs> As, oh. Excuse you. Frankly, that's, even. <laughs> that's really difficult. Would you guys like to go to the gala? Yeah! Yeah! Uh. <laughs> Are you going to invite Rama too and Redbriar, or just? Oh my God! Just of the course, crew. Okay. Probably oh does God. probably Rama. Maybe not Redbriar. I don't think Mouse trusts Redbriar enough. Oh, okay. Redbriar will stay home and Fuck watch Redbriar. Pigeon. Are we? Are we all under aliases? Oh, definitely. <clears throat> so okay. I think, I think Mouse Mouse gives so much money to this place uh, through like different anonymous donations that I think Mouse probably has a fake identity for everybody. <laughs> I love what's it. What's my fake identity? Yep, Nick. What's our fake identities? Oh my gosh. Um, well, um, also should Stephen I... bring Myrie? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, I think I, I'm like I'm gonna let you guys make up the fake identities. No, I'm no, not no, 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 no. No, I'm sorry. If you if what, you say to be fake identity? identities, you gotta let us know what they are. Mine okay. is fine, but I have one. Oh, what, <laughs> um, what are our names? I, no, go ahead. I think, <laughs> I think uh, uh, Acton gets one that is just going off of the same like fake Britishness. Um, it's like like Earl Popper, Earl Earl Popper Worthington. Jesus Christ! <laughs> like like the like an awful name. It's just awful. And Mouse is like, "This is you." <laughs> Earl Popper Worthington. That's all my characters. Thank you very much. It's it's awful, and I love it. Um, yeah, the <laughs> you're the Earl. So long on these character sheets. Wait, is it is it is it like is it like this or is it? Huh? He's typing Earl. in this one. Earl, not L. Oh, okay. That makes more sense. Like. Earl, as in like, like a that. fancy title, and, like yeah, like a member of royalty. Wait, or is it Worthington. first name Popper, last name Worthington, or is it Earl and then hyphenated Popper Worthington? No, no, it's no, 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 Popper. It's like, like it's like P A U P E R. Like oh, okay, his first name is Popper. Weird, it's, but it's not okay. good. It can't. That's be. a weird name. Apparently, my parents did not fucking like me. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, why would they? Look at you. Oh. Wow. Um, <laughs> Did you just make yourself go, aw? Yeah. That's pretty <laughs> bad. You mean Ethan what the for yourself? Fuck? Uh, Rebecca, what, what name did you have for... Tallulah Taffington. Oh, oh my god, I love it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she gets a little drunk and is like, hello, I'm Tallulah Taffington. So delighted. Oh my god, I Maddie love this. Maddie Wickersworth, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and that's their name. That's theirs right there. Yep, that's oh Marion Marion Coatsworth. Hey, I took it from West Wing. Just FYI, that's fine. Oh my god, I think god, it makes it, that makes it even is. better. <laughs> like, that's where I know it from. That's where I know it from. <laughs> where CJ can Oh my gosh. Like, yeah. Uh, wow. Regardless, uh, yeah. So I think Mouse is inviting all of uh, all their friends to this um, this thing. Okay, I was gonna say Stephen should be uh, Steph Grantington, but that's fine. I'm just going to say, why is everyone's last name Inton? Because it's, it's the most stereotypical English name. Yep. That, is, that, is the kind, that does sound like the kind of thing that, that Mouse would do if Mouse were coming up with a bunch of aliases to to give money under. Is the, like 
I, I imagine that Mouse would make them all sound super fancy. And to Mouse, ending your name in Ington <laughs> is the most fancy thing you can possibly do. Yep, yep. Um, I think in this case, I think when Mouse hands the fake identity to uh, to Stephen, it says uh-huh. Doctor in front of it. Oh yeah. Oh. That's so. Nice. What was what was my? You get to be you get, get to be a doctor for the night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for tonight, right? What's Stephen's name? I, oh, I thought they already came up with a name. No, you, you, you never told me. Oh, uh, okay. Um, I'm gonna say, it, and I'm gonna say, Myrie is PhD at the end of. Oh, the I'll, have to let, I'll have to let Sandra know. It's 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 doctor and doctor. Yeah, it's great. Uh, oh God! Oh God! <clears throat> Really stereotypical, uh, Fanny. Fanny is Manny. Er, Fanny is Myrie. Okay. Fanny is Manny. It's my favorite thing you've ever said. Uh, and, uh, Stephen is going to be just basic Charles. I was thinking Charles. Okay. Last name. Oh, gosh. Rockwood. Charles Lockwood. Wait, Charles Lockwood Rockwood. with an L or an R? Oh, I like the L better. That's better. Lockwood. Yeah, that's good. Charles and Fanny Lockwood. Doctors. It's good. It's good. That's a cool name. All right. Okay, so this gala <laughs> then. <laughs> I wasn't planning until just... Yeah, this, this took a turn and I'm very happy about it. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad too. Okay. Um, because it means I get to do things that I wasn't expecting, but I have an idea for. All right. Wait, very quickly. Charles Lockwood, PhD or MD? MD. Cool. Okay. By the way, it, it, when you said when you said Rockwood, I got a little weirded out because in the Masks game I play, um, I play a character named Josh Rock Road, and you got oh. really close without realizing it. Nice. All right. I like it. So he got his name from Rocky Road. Um, we arrive at this gala. Uh, it's very fancy. Uh, Ramla is there as well. Um, we don't have to give Ramla a fake name. She's under some sort of pseudonym. Um, but you all. She's a in- she's a jinn. I'm pretty sure she could just create a, a different person if she wanted to. Exactly. Like she can change her face, so it's fine. Um, but wait, she can? Uh, yeah. She She's a doesn't. jinn, man. That's so oh, bad. That's pretty the cool. Name of that. Father, so why may become jinn? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, every time I have to say at least once. Nice. Okay. <laughs> I, prefer, a second. Just... I prefer rum. All right. Okay. So we all arrive at the you're, Scala. You're in it. It's very fancy. Um, <laughs> there uh, are big signs up. Uh, with like all the sponsors and that sort of thing, um, and two that kind of obviously you know there's Plume Tech, um, and another one that stands out to you is the Lotan Group, um, though it's in kind of like smaller font and like it's not like it's not like a headliner thing. Um, and Mouse, you would know that recently um, Harper sold her company to the Lotan Group, um, and like. It kind of came as a, a, a surprise and a shock in the business world um, because people kind of assumed that um, Harper was kind of doing her own thing. Um, but there were announcements made of like this partnership and that, uh, you know, that they were going to be working together from now on. Um, and apparently they are also sponsoring this gala. Uh, okay, so you all go inside. Um, I think the. Uh, I think it takes place <clears throat> inside the group home itself and like they've cleared like a ballroom area. Uh, it's a very nice place. Um, like it's not super fancy. Um, they've kind of done it up a little fancier than it is. Um, but it is, you know, it, it looks like it was, it would be a nice place to live. Like there's, you know, hardwood paneling on the walls and, you know, uh, there's, uh, I don't know what other things do nice places to live have well like i imagine that like frankly if this place was too nice the kids probably wouldn't want to live there right exactly uh, so yeah like it's yeah I, yeah i think like it's it's probably like uh you know like you were saying hard, hardwood paneling on the walls and like i don't know like 
the linoleum floor is like not like crazy, but like you know, it's it's something that's gonna be durable. It's not. It looks kind of nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. Um. So yeah. So it's a nice place. Um. You all go inside. Uh. People are kind of milling around, talking in various different circles. Um. As you come in, you see uh, someone is actually giving a speech as you enter. Um, and it's a man dressed in a very plain black suit. Um, he couldn't be more than uh, 30 years old. Um, and he kind of has black hair kind of slicked down. Um, and he's talking about, you know, how great uh, the, um, the group home is and how um, Harper... How when he met Harper, he was impressed by her dedication to making the world a better place, uh, and improving the circumstances of those less fortunate. Um, and, you know, he encourages all the donors to give very generously. Um, and everyone kind of claps for his speech, and then he gets down and, you know, the music starts back up again. Um so, yeah, so really, really quick. Mm-hmm. I think it's worth noting that the, that the others, that uh, the three of you uh, going to this place, Mouse didn't tell you why we're going here. Nice. <laughs> oh, cool. So Mouse, just, just, Mouse just kind of, out. yeah, Mouse just kind of hands you invitation to, and just goes, we're going to a party. Please dress up and act normal and looks at Stephen. <laughs> um, okay, so then I should probably let you know that, um, <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Steven is dressed like, oh, no. on, like this. Oh no. oh no! Except for he also has a baby. He has a baby Bjorn <laughs> with pigeon in it. Yes. <laughs> oh my god! Well, I Ramla's here too, so I, I don't have a babysitter. I mean, no, we said uh, Redbriar could. But no, 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 I'm sorry. No, don't trust Redbriar enough yet. Nope. Okay, fair enough. So Stephen is dressed to the nines, plus goggles, and a baby Bjorn with a tiny little infant in it. Mm-hmm. For our audience, it's a what looks to be a brown, like suede suit, um, and a and like, another and a top like hat, full, <laughs> and a top like hat. full Victorian, full Victorian. I yeah. think steampunk, and you kind of got it. Yeah, like yeah, vel- yeah. striped velvet pants. It's pretty great. Nice. Okay. And a it's baby Bjorn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the baby Bjorn noting, is the best part. It's worth noting that right now, Mouse's hair is is like bubblegum pink. So, like, it's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I'm sure it's seen as very fashionable. Uh, is Pigeon also wearing a smaller, tinier top hat? <gasps> uh, Pigeon is absolutely wearing a, t- a smaller, tinier wow. top hat. And and a monocle. <laughs> <laughs> it's the cutest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> I gotta say, Pigeon... P- I, mean, I mean, the doc may be a great creation, but Pigeon is truly my greatest creation. Oh, <laughs> that's secondingly sweet. All right. Oh, um, I love it. <clears throat> so yeah. So, what would you all like to do at this gala? Wait, I want to know. I want to know what Rebecca's wearing. Um, do you remember the Nicki Minaj dress that we wore to? Um, was it Arcadia? Was the name of that bar? Oh yeah. Um, yeah. It is I remember that dress. It. Bishop has one like three hundred dollar <clears throat> dress, and she wears it for everything. It is her only. You know what I mean? Like she's got like the one really nice dress, and she has made it work for like a decade. Nice. <laughs> I love okay. it. So frugal. Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm ready to stop. Oops. Mm. What is Acton wearing? Oh, he, he like he goes for for blue like all the time. So it's um, uh, midnight blue tux uh, with uh, black lapels, black lining, obviously, uh, and a black bow tie. Hmm. Nice. Oh, very he's, black. He sounds tie. like he look. He looks. He looks very very dapper. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm surprised he dis- isn't just wearing his police blues. <laughs> to, be like fair, his... that, to be fair, I made the midnight blue because police. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he's trying not to stand out. <laughs> yeah. I uh, do that a lot. Like... <laughs> so you said Mouse was dressed kind of funny, <laughs> like she, uh, they're wearing a dress for once. Uh, is there any other detail you'd like to give, Nick? Um... 
I think they're they're probably wearing flats. They're, they're though they though they look a little bit femi, they're not going like full heels. Uh, uh, but I think uh, no, just like mid. I think the dress is like a. Um, it's very much like a little black dress kind of thing, kind of situation with their uh, cotton candy pink hair. Mm-hmm. And I think the hair, like for once, is like a little bit long, um, and it's hanging down. Uh, Mouse is like, it's not often that Mouse embraces like the femme side of their persona, but like right now, it's a little bit, you know, there. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. All right. Um. <clears throat> Yeah, and so so what are you all going to do with this gala? All of us? Yeah. The um, doc Bishop's has no idea be, why he's here. Yeah, Bishop's going to say to Mouse, uh, sweetie, if you need me, just uh, let me know. I'm going to go get some oh. champagne and like goes after a waiter. <laughs> <laughs> nice. What is, what is uh, Bishop wearing? Oh, I said the Nicki Minaj dress from Arcadia. Oh. Oh, okay, sorry, I missed that. No worries. I can go find the photo again. But anyway, continue. How about Acton and Steven? Uh, yeah, I've got it. You found yeah. it? Okay. Yeah. Um, just give me a second to grab it. Okay. There Aha. it is. Yeah. Nice. <clears throat> I mean, it is a great dress. It's a great dress. It was a very <clears throat> strappy black dress. Yes. It makes, I love it, it. It, it, it makes those boobs pop. <laughs> pop, pop. Yeah, it does. Um, so, yeah. So, what are Stephen and Acton doing at this uh, gala? Uh, oh, uh, Stephen's first. Is, uh, sorry, Acton's first. They, they go straight to the bar. Yeah. Going to go get his drink <laughs> on. <laughs> oh, what? Well, Eric was just like, yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, and Steven and Myrie? I just posted what Myrie is wearing. Oh, no. <laughs> God damn it. What, what I love is Steven and Myrie are those people. Yeah, that, we like, are. Right, right, <laughs> like, talks about but doesn't talk about in front of them. Uh, the cosplay ball is next week, guys. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> um, like, as they walk in, some people like snide remarks and like, Comic-Con isn't yet. Yeah, hmm. Huh. <laughs> no, it's very nice. She is dressed very steampunky as well, and also has a top hat. It's a family of top hats. Yes, we are. We are a top hat heavy family, mm-hmm. and a nice walking stick. Mm-hmm. Um, well, Stephen, it still isn't a hundred percent on why we're here. Uh, so I think if, at least for the beginning, he's gonna <clears throat> stick by Mouse. Okay. Because he, in, until he understands the situation, he's going to say by people he understands. And I think Mouse anticipated this, and uh, they reach into a small bag they brought along and and pull out like a like a sack of like um, like dollar coins, um, and just like hands it to, uh, to 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 Stephen and just says, "You can donate over there," and points to a bunch of like little. Things where they can just drop the coins in for different causes, uh, and it's like it's like two hundred dollars worth of coins, just like here. Well, I know Myri would probably squeal at that, <laughs> <laughs> and then they would go over and happily like pick out causes to donate to. Nice, I like it. Um, Mouse knows you people so well. I think Ramla is probably going to kind of schmooze a bit. Um, Ramla's the kind of person that even if they don't know anyone at a party, they'll still go around and like try to make friends. Be the life of the party? Yeah, a little bit. Um, but she's also kind of staying in Mouse's orbit and like <clears throat> keeping an eye on Mouse and like making sure that they don't get into trouble. <clears throat> yeah, I I just want to say really quick that even though uh, it, like Mouse may not say it. I, as a player, really like Ramla as a person. <laughs> I just want to hug her and just be like, hi, friend. Mm-hmm. She's so nice. She is. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, what is Mouse going to do now that everyone's um, kind of taken care of? Yeah. I think the moment that Mouse realizes that they're alone, um, they just start scanning the place for Harper. Okay. Um, it's immediately. There's, there, there is no, there's no subtlety here. Gotcha. 
Um, so Harper is uh, naturally very dressed up as well, wearing kind of a long flowing, uh, we'll say uh, kind of like aquamarine gown um, and uh, wearing some like, kind of nice earrings that hang down a bit. Um, she has makeup on, um, looks very different than obviously, you know, she's gotten older since Mouse last saw her. Um, and she looks very, like, even though, you know, she's very dressed up and she looks very elegant, she also looks very professional as well. Um, like, she's standing around, um, with a small group of other people, drinking champagne, um, you know, to kind of discussing things and occasionally smiling a little bit, but most of the time her expression is very serious. Um, but yeah. So she's kind of standing around with an with a small group of uh, people, you know, dressed in tuxedos and dresses, uh, presumably other donors as well. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and, and I think Mouse waits for uh, sort of waits for an opening. They're they're not going to go up and just like interrupt. Like I think Mouse, like Harper is one of the very very few people that Mouse uh, is like hyper aware of, like social norms mm -hmm. um, like usually mouth just ignores those things but with harper like they're they're very much like aware right now and they're trying not to come off as disrespectful in this moment um so i think mouse waits for a uh waits for an opening in uh the moment that like maybe somebody walks away and like maybe another group is, is approaching uh, mouse approaches um with a uh, with a check uh, written out that they pull out of their bag, um, uh, and just kind of walks up very like purposefully, um, and uh, it, without saying anything, just kind of hands out the check and just uh, waits for Harper to look up and like make eye contact. Okay. Um... So yeah, so as the group that was kind of trying to her, they like kind of finish up, Harper thanks them for their donations, um, and they kind of drift away. Um, and as she looks up as you're walking towards her with the check, um, your eyes kind of meet, and you see that flash of recognition in her eyes. And she was holding a glass of champagne, which just like slips through her fingers and falls to the ground <laughs> with a crash. Um, out of just like... It's not one of those things where, like, she, she's throwing it down. It's just, like, she's so, like, thrown that, like, her grip, like, her body just, like, kind of tenses and then relaxes so that, you know, she loses her grip on it. Um, and as you see her kind of for the first time in this long time, um, for a second, she's the old Harper again, and she kind of looks at you almost with a smirk and looking at you a hundred percent like you are her equal and like she's proud of you and like you know you were her partner um but then it's only for a moment and the moment passes and there's something else that kind of radiates through the echo and through the magic that surrounds you from her and all of a sudden the voice of the Stygian is in the back of your mind and it's talking to you and whispering about the pain that is suddenly etched on Harper's face, like physical pain to see you again. Uh, the pain of betrayal, of loss, of just an all-consuming despair. And the Stygian whispers to you and it says, you weren't there, you did nothing, and this was all your fault. Um, I think Mouse is, like, stunned for a moment. Both, like, the shattering of the glass and then the look on Harper's face and this voice. Um, I think Mouse is... Uh, Mouse feels like everything around them is quiet for a long time. Um, and they don't move. It's probably, like, one of those times where, like, the moment feels a lot longer than it actually is. Um... Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, I think they just kind of shrug and everything is loud again. And Mouse uh, uh, steps forward a couple more steps um, 
and smiles uh, like they used to uh, and just says hi. Mm -hmm. Um, Harper recovers too and her face just goes kind of into like this very placid like mask of like corporate indifference and like friendliness um and there's something very professional about her bearing and she says oh hi mouse it's it's been a long time um how have you been fine i guess um looks like you've looks like you've really done something great with your family's money mm -hmm. um she smiles pleasantly um but still very service level and kind of artificial <laughs> and she says thank you i'm um i'm happy that i'm able to do something like this uh I see you've chosen to donate. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Mouse hands the check and says, uh, kind of like nonchalantly and like very, uh, like nonchalantly, but like with a little bit of subtlety. Um, just, it's not my first time. Uh, Harper kind of smiles a little wryly and like for a second, like the mask kind of drops and she says, yes, I know. You didn't, you didn't say anything. She kind of breathes in and says, I figured when you were ready, I didn't want to push things. I, I honestly don't know if I'm ready for this yet. I mean, it's, it's been a decade. I I thought it would be fine. I'm I'm sorry if I if I overstepped. Uh, she shakes her head and says, "No, no, it's it's good to see you again. I'm I'm happy to see you, and that looks like you're doing well. Um, I'm sorry. It's just uh, you surprised me. Is all." Uh, I surprised myself. I wasn't expecting to want to come, but I've been through some stuff lately, and I wanted to make amends. Um, Harper nods um, and says, I understand. Um, I don't think I could accept it at the time, but looking back, what happened really wasn't your fault, and I hope you don't feel like it was. I just... I wish things could have been different. That, that's, that's nice of you to say, but it, it was my fault to some extent. And I, she, like, they hold up a hand to, like, stop Harper from saying anything if, if they're going to interject and just says, like, I've had a lot of time to think about it, and I, I'm sorry. And I just wanted to, it felt like it was time. Um, and Miles just kind of, like, re, re, like, looks over and starts, like, shuffling through their bag and pulls out a, uh, a small card, uh, almost like a business card, but it's just empty. Uh, except that Mouse has like written a phone number on it, uh, and just hands the card to uh, to Harper and says, "If you ever need anything from me, you you know what I can do, and I'm I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make sure that we're okay." Uh, Harper nods and takes the card from you and looks at it and says, "You know, it's funny." Um... Just a short time ago, I would have taken you up on that in an instant, but... And her eye line kind of drifts a little bit away from you um, towards the man that was speaking earlier. And she says, I think... I think I've found a way to make things okay. 
uh, Mouse looks over at the guy. Does Mouse know anything about this guy? No. He doesn't look like anyone. He looks like just like uh, another like mid-level manager. Like even his suit, like everyone else is dressed up, but he's just wearing like a suit you would wear to a job interview or something like that. He's like hmm. the plainest looking man. Uh, okay. Um, Mouse, uh, Mouse just kind of, uh, smiles a little bit as if they're happy, but they're not really happy about this situation. And I think Mouse <laughs> says, um, uh, yeah, I, I, I heard you're selling the company. I think of it more as a partnership. Um, you may have heard things about Low Ten, and I want to let you know that um, I take my parents' company very seriously, and I wouldn't be doing this if uh, I didn't have a very good reason. Um. Lotan's one of the companies that we've dealt with, isn't it? Uh, I don't think you guys... You may have heard them in passing occasionally. I don't have any notes that specifically point to you guys having oh, okay. dealt with them before. Does Mouse know anything about this company? It is almost impossibly difficult to find stuff out about Lotan Group. Not because they're really high security, but because they're so boring uh, that no uh. one writes anything about them. Uh, they're a holdings company, which means they own a lot of different other companies, um, and they kind of, like, take some of the profit from them, um, but no one's really sure what they do or what they provide, just that a lot of businesses that you would think have nothing to do with each other um, are all owned by the Lotan group. Uh, for example, Leviathan Private Security who you have dealt with in the past, is owned by the Lotan group. Yeah. So so I think Mouse probably would have known that just from doing research on Leviathan, right? Yes. Okay. Um, Mouse frowns when, uh, when Harper says that things are going to get better um, and just very openly frowns and says, uh, I wouldn't trust them. Um, she smiles kind of sadly and says trust isn't what's important in business what's important is doing what needs to be done um, when Harper says that Mouse frowns even more deeply um, and kind of like looks over their shoulder for like the closest person, which I think is probably Ramla yeah. at this point. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, they, they kind of make eye contact and uh, Harper looks back to, uh, I'm sorry, Mouse looks back to Harper um, and just says, you sound just like your parents. Ooh. <laughs> so goddamn with, with a dis With a disappointed look on their face, like the most disappointed. Um, and they're, uh, I think after they say it, their chin, like, just quivers just for, for a moment. Like, Mouse is very upset about this. Mm -hmm. Aww, um, Harper. So, is Nick breaking up for anyone else, or is it just me? A just little you. bit. Not badly, um, though. Come on, nice. My god damn it. Just making sure. Okay. I hate this fucking thing. <laughs> no, I can hear you, Nick. Um, so Harper, Harper's <clears throat> eyes widen a little bit. Um, and then she kind of frowns. She, she, she doesn't frown. She smiles kind of sadly and says, Thank you, Mouse. I take that as a compliment. I'd like to think that if my parents were still here, they'd be proud of everything I've done. Um, 
I think Mouse doesn't say anything. Um, they just look back down at the card in uh, Harper's hands uh, and looks back up at uh, Harper and says, um, I meant it that if you need anything, you can call. But don't call if it's any Monday bullshit. And then turns around and leaves. <laughs> All right. Nice. Okay. Um, I think uh, if you look... And, 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 oh, and when I say leaves, Mouth just leaves the party. Like, without telling anybody. He just goes and leaves. Okay. Uh, I think Ramla probably starts to follow you out. And, like, the rest of you kind of get, like, uh, a message through the echo from Ramla that Mouse is leaving um, and seems a little upset. Yeah, do we, like, feel that, like, emotion off of Mouse? Is I would say so. It it's it's pretty intense emotions that Mouse is probably experiencing. Uh, Nick, what would you say other people were feeling from Mouse right now? Um, I think in this case, that they might they might be getting... Um, you know, in the interest of like people getting to know Mouse better, I think they're starting to 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 get like flashes from Mouse's history um, that are like related to this. I think they're they're getting flashes of um, Mouse as like a a child um, with two parents who are just the most ordinary people that you can imagine. Um, and they're friendly, they're happy, they're nice, but they're ordinary. Um, and then I think it's it's a flash of a uh, of a car crash. Um, and that's all you see is just a car crash, and then you see mouse on the streets. Um, and then you see mouse meeting a little girl, like a teenager who bears a strong resemblance to Harper and then you see them friends and then you see flashing back to like our first session you see um, uh, uh, you, you hear gunfire and you hear glass shattering and you you see more of it this time you see you see mouse land in the glass and you see and you can feel the cuts in their hand um, and Mouse looks up and sees uh, Harper with them. Um, and then you don't see what happens, but you see people uh, finding Mouse, uh, who you recognize probably tangentially as some of like the most um, like veteran members of the of the messengers uh, coming to meet with uh, coming to like take Mouse away to teach them about the echo. Um, and the last thing you see as like mouse is leaving this, this, um, this gala is you see mouse, uh, returning to a manor, like a large, uh, large estate, uh, to find, uh, Harper standing, uh, in the like ballroom entrance to this, this estate, uh, over her family's bodies. Um, and Harper just says, Harper looks up at Mouse and the last, this, this is the last thing you hear. And I think this is like the loudest thing that's, that's echoing through, echoing through the echo, um, is you weren't there. Mm -hmm. Um, I think once Bishop like feels all of this and realizes Mouse is like heading out the door, she like throws back the champagne that was in her and, like puts it on a waiter's tray and then like takes like hikes up her the hands of her dress and like <clears throat> takes off after mouse you know like gotta be there for your bestie uh, uh runs yeah after I, I, them I... and like puts an arm around their shoulders <clears throat> and just like it's like hey hey you okay talk to me what's going on i just want to get out of here okay let me let me call a cab let me call an Uber. A Lyft. Oh, wait, it's a me. Lyft. God damn it. <laughs> oh, wait, you're <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, though, I'm saying myself. 
<laughs> Bishop's phone starts going off. It's like shit. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think after uh, after feeling and hearing all of that, um, like still sitting at the bar, when uh, he see uh, Acton sees uh, Mouse like start to leave, and then sees uh, Bishop chase after. Uh, and, and all he does is he like reaches over the bar, grabs like just any bottle that's there, uh, grabs it, and then just chases after them. <laughs> I, I get the feeling the bartender's like, "Hey, you can't," and then Acton just looks at them, and they're just like, "Yeah, never mind." <laughs> <laughs> he just he gives them a look and goes, "It was free anyway," and then just leaves. <laughs> <laughs> nice, I love it. Um, yeah. And then um, I think, like, as, like I think I could get outside as the lift arrives, um, and I guess I guess we'll climb in the front because the future at the back, and we'll hold it for everyone else. <laughs> yeah, but the first thing he does is he like just opens the bottle, turns around, and hands it to Mouse. <laughs> and then yeah, he goes, and I- "Trust me." <laughs> And I think Mouse goes for it. Yeah, in this case, Mouse is going for it. Oh, we're such good friends. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget, I've got that whole protect Mouse at all costs thing. It's like, oh, it's not just physically. Oh, yeah. Aww. Um, what are laws in Toronto about having an open container in a vehicle? There are no laws when it comes to lifts. No. Um, <laughs> also, what do we care about laws? Have you been in this game? <laughs> Uh, how, how does uh, Stephen and my? How, what are Stephen and Myrie going to do when they? Oh, we're still this? having an absolute blast. I, I don't even know if we realize that it's happening with how much fun we're having. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. They're parents. They never get to get out like this anymore. Yeah. yeah. And pigeon. We got to dress up pigeon, which is a wonderful experience. Okay. Oh, you don't even know yet. Mm-hmm. I think this is the beginning. I think Rama's going to shepherd uh, the three of you into the lift um, and like uh, urge the two of you to take care of Mouse. Uh, and she's going to stay here and make sure the Doc and Myri get home safe, essentially. Okay. Excellent. Fair. Thank you so much, Rama. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll talk tomorrow. Okay. All right. Um, is there anything else you guys want to say to Mouse in this ride home, or Acton wouldn't say anything? Like Acton's just gonna just be there in case, and we'll just sort of stand on like the outer perimeter of this group, just being like, I don't know what to do or say, but I'm just gonna be here. Okay. I know. I, I think Bishop just keeps her arm around Mouse and like squeezes them tightly, and is like, do. You... Mm. Do you want to talk about it? And also, at the same time, she's giving the Lyft driver better instructions on how to get home. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, and I, I think Mouse like, doesn't even respond uh, out loud. That like they clearly do not want to talk about it. But just the fact that we're all connected through the through the uh, through the echo, I think all I think all of you, including um, Doc and Myrie in this case. Um, are just kind of hearing Mouse's thoughts. Um, they, there's no way that they can't broadcast them. Uh, and Mouse just keeps going back to, um, she's not who I remember. Oh, baby. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> I just want to hug Mouse so bad. Yeah, that's <laughs> sad, sad it's story. Oh. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, would, well, anyone, would anyone like to respond to that, or are, are we going to kind of close out this scene here? I think we kind of close out. I don't, I don't yeah. think there's anything else we can do. Okay. I, I kind of want to see, like, throughout the rest of the night, is like is Mouse just, like, sticking with, like, is it just, like, Mouse getting incredibly drunk on that, and then Bishop and Act and just sort of standing around making sure that they're okay? because <laughs> I feel like that's the like we get back to the black site and Mouse is gonna just like I just imagine like not like not go near a computer and just clutch the bottle even though Acton kind of wants it back uh, 
Uh, Mouse, Mouse, goes uh, Mouse, goes, Mouse goes full Jessica Jones. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Acton can get another bottle. <laughs> Acton will just walk over to the legging cabinet and get another bottle, don't worry. Yeah, exactly. That was the good stuff, though. All right. Fair enough. Okay, well, that was kind of heavy. But um, <clears throat> good stuff. Good role playing. All right. Um, so let's move forward a little bit. Um, after the next few days, uh, actually, let me find it here. Um, so taking a step backwards, um, when you first told Ramla uh, about your success um, taking down uh, the um, the drug manufacturer in Oakenheart, um, she congratulates you all on a job well done. She's very happy. Um, she tells you that the court will no doubt be pleased as well um, and asks for you to have a little patience uh, while she reports everything that has happened uh, back to uh, who she reports to, which is the Fairy Queen, the Queen of Leaves. Um, so jumping back ahead, in the present time, over the next few days um, after the gala and... Uh, uh, Bishop went to go see T. Uh, Ram was gone for a few days, um, presumably back at the court. Um, and then after a few more days, uh, she returns to the black site uh, and calls you all back together um, once you've had a chance to kind of decompress and uh, have a little downtime. Um, when she calls you back together, she seems a little bit uncertain. Um, and you can feel kind of her anxiety through the echo uh, as she paces kind of your guys' meeting room or wherever you guys, you know, get together to talk about things. Um, she's also, Redbriar's also there. She's also called Redbriar into this meeting. Uh, and Redbriar's kind of watching Ramla, her mentor, with kind of increasing apprehension. Um, once you all get there, though, her expression breaks into kind of a nervous, relieved smile, um, and she thanks you all for coming. Uh, she says, my friends, I, I will come straight to it. Uh, you have all been summoned to an audience with the queen and her court. Oh. Uh, uh, wow. Oh. Okay. What? When? Where? What should, what should I wear? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, never immediately, immediately Acton is going to say it's court, you wear a suit well I court, it's not that kind of court like a court court, it's like the court of a queen it's still court, I guess right, and then he just looks at Rama right, Mel's looks at, Mel's looks at both of you and goes, that's not important right now Rama, I've never met a queen before Rama smiles kind of haphazardly <laughs> like, oh bless you and also, a little <laughs> bit, you feel like through her echo, through the echo, she's feeling like, "Oh boy, I got some work to do now." <laughs> she says, um, "It's it's a little different from the courts you might be familiar with. It's an audience before the queen and um, the leadership of uh, the court of leaves." Um, there are many standards, many matters of protocol. Um, knowing what to dress is important. Um, I'll go over all of that with you. Um, we'll need a few days to prepare. Don't worry. I don't think we'll be summoned right away. Um, it's just... The thing is that the Queen of Leaves, she's a cautious woman. She's a very wise monarch. She has my utmost respect. But also, at times, she can be a very capricious fae. Uh, her moods have been known to change almost wildly at times, and some have left audiences with her with less parts than when they arrived. Eesh. Less physical parts? That's actually... Uh, yes, physical and um, mental. <laughs> my notes like were just like typing everything you said and then you had like less parts and all I wrote was like be careful around her <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's essentially what she's communicating to you 
I mean, what what does she have to be upset with us about? We we solved a big problem. Uh, Ramla nods and like kind of puts up her hands. Like, I agree. I um, I just I I believe she wishes to question you on some of the matters of your conduct in this matter. While I can find no fault with anything you have done, yeah. um, there may be some lingering doubts as to how... And she, like, glances really quickly at Steven uh, and then looks back at Mouse and says, as to how subtle you were in your affairs. Um, at Steven and not acting. Damn. Yeah. You. <laughs> I mean, um, at this so point, Mouse... Acton's a lost cause. <laughs> uh, so I, I think Mouse kind of smiles a little bit and just says, can we have individual meetings? Um, she shakes her, shakes her head sadly and says, I'm sorry, the queen wishes to meet all of her uh, brave and kind messengers as one. Um, it is her fashion. Uh, but therefore, I, I urge you all to be cautious, to be courteous. Uh, do speak truthfully when you speak with her, but do not be too cavalier with the truth. And give no offense, if possible. Um, also, if any of you look over at Redbriar, you see her eyes have just, like, slowly widened into dinner plates while Ramla has told you guys about this, and she is, like, physically shaking. It, wait, why? Is Redbriar coming with us? Um, Ramla so. looks over at Redbriar and smiles kind of sadly and says, yes, um, Redbriar has been summoned before the court as well. And Redbriar okay, so just like kind of gasps. I think Mouse immediately turns to Redbriar and just walks right up, up to her and like puts her puts their finger on Redbriar's chest and just says, you need to tell us everything that you've been through. We need to know what we're getting into. Redbriar was the girl that we found in... In the truck. In the truck, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. I think Redbriar is going to be honest with you. Um, she, like, <clears throat> she starts with, like, her entire life story and... Great. You have to be like, no, no, narrow it down, narrow it down. Um, back in 90, like, no, no, no. Yeah, like, like, back, no, like, going back to, like, the 1800s, because she's Faye. Um, oh, yeah. And, like, fast forwarding to the, fast forwarding to the crux of it is, she doesn't know why she would be summoned. Um, all she did was get rescued by you. Um, she's never been before the court before. Uh, she's a nobody, um, and there's nothing that really sticks out in her life story or anything that would, like, make her seem like she's the one in trouble. Um, Maybe it's a good thing. <clears throat> then why were, your, why were your eyes as wide as they are? Um, she, like, kind of glances at Ramla, and Ramla nods, and she says, I we've all heard stories and we've all seen what happens to those that displease the queen of the court of leaves. And like, she doesn't go into grisly details, but it's very clear that she is very afraid of the court. Good. Good. Okay. <laughs> so we have a few days, right? Right. And Ramla says, um, if you'll permit me, I would like to try and teach you some of the manners of our court and the proper forms, courtesies, and manners. Please do. Heck yes. I love this. Okay. Can we have a Princess Diaries montage? Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> Ash also yes. Uh, yes. Ash also type montage. <laughs> um... Okay. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to ask Ramla or anything like that before we move into the montage? Can I um, just no, a note? I think uh, we should leave it alone and use it as flashbacks when necessary. Yeah. Okay. As, I like that idea. As flavor, as flavor, when uh, talks about being subtle and she like kind of 
glares at Steven. I just want to make it clear that Bishop like crosses her arms and looks at Acton instead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Steven can talk to people. Steven's can first talk to people, thank you. Okay, Acton's first response is to is to find a sixteen year old and choke them out. <laughs> stop bringing that up. I have to cut it out Jeff, every time. Also, stop making her younger. It was eighteen. And also, someone down there at the street just looked at me when I said that, and it's not creepy. Wave. <laughs> All right. 18. 18. Thank you very much. Okay. So, um... um so, you know, th there is one question Acton's going to ask, I, <laughs> just because I don't want to flashback with this. How do we address the Queen? Um... And what do we address them as? Uh, she Majesty, says... Highness. Uh, she says, Your Highness is the preferred title. Um, Your Highness, uh, Queen Cassiopeia of the Queen of Leaves. Um... Wait. I'm going to type this down. Your Highness, uh, Cassiopeia, Queen of Leaves. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll go into the forms of address and everything. Um, it, it will take some time to learn. Oh, I spelled that correctly. Nice. Okay. I should put that there, Sounds good. So... Um, so yeah, we're, we're going to leave it. Leave the particulars for flashbacks if we need them. Yeah. Uh, but in general, like Ramla is usually very nice to you guys, um, but she makes it clear that she's like actively worried for you. So she's a little stricter with you than she might be otherwise when she's kind of drilling these things into you, um, and she makes you train like almost seemingly for hours at a time, you know. Uh, memorizing all the forms of address and, you know, the proper way to stand, the proper way to bow, the proper way to walk, all of that stuff. Um, it feels like almost like a month of, of training, but she compresses it down into a week. Uh, and uh, finally, after that week, uh, she deems you all passable, though she's still obviously rather nervous. Um, and after that time, uh, your official summons to the court arrives uh, via a mechanical songbird made out of brass uh, who sings oh. each of your names in a voice like the crackling of dried leaves and bids you follow it in a dead language to the court of leaves. What, oh what, name, what names does it use? Does it use Mouse or does it use Mouse's real name? Um, Interesting. And does it use the doc or, or Stephen? It wouldn't say doctor. Why not? That's my that's my, that's my moniker. The same way that Mouse is is his oh, moniker. Yeah, because no one calls you doc. <laughs> okay, you guys don't call me doc because you don't call me doc for some reason. We call you Stephen, which is your name. Because you are not a doctor. We I are very against you being a doctor. And you're not a mouse. All right, hold on. Guys, I feel like you guys argue about the, like I feel like the songbird says your names and then you guys argue about this and then the songbird says them again. Um, Ramla, it, Ramla is the one who would give your names, so she would give your names as Mouse and probably Doctor Stephen O'Neill because Ramla likes you and like puts up with Stephen's bullshit. <laughs> so um, he means well. Yes, he does. Um, so yeah, so, um, Ramla has you dress in the clothes she's picked out for you. Um, they're very, they're almost like, they're almost like robes. Um, and they all bear kind of like a mark or a sigil or like, um, like a pin on them with the symbol of the messengers on it. Um, and also like it, it's what, what I'm going for is you look like a, a medieval scholar or scribe essentially when you're dressed in these things. Okay. Um, like they're not really easy to move around in. Like they're very old timey and old fashioned. Like you put on what almost is like a mortar board hat, but like, it's not like as hokey as you look like you're graduating. It's very clearly these are the clothes that messengers use to talk to the court. 
Um, <clears throat> does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. In the same way that, yeah. like, in British court, you wear the robes and the powder of the wig because that's, the, that's like, the tradition, but no one actually fucking wears those. Right, exactly. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, Ash, I think, I think you're mistaking, like, criminal court for this. No, I, I, I'm fine. not. Acton, Acton 100% <laughs> is. That's the, that's the joke, is Acton yeah. is 100% oh, okay, cool. confusing it. But I, I just use that as a reference for this. I okay, like, so who is Ash or who is Acton? I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> so Acton is definitely one of, like, when Acton went, it's court, that's Acton. Ash is under no assumption that court and criminal court are the same. Acton, <laughs> so, however, thinks this is court. So just to clarify, it's more like this type of stuff. <laughs> yes. Okay, you can't just okay. say this on Veron Audio. Um, okay. It's like, a te- it, it, it's like what a teacher would wear at a graduating ceremony, a little bit. Where they have okay. like the fancier graduating outfits and robes, so the, uh, it's more medieval than anything else. Exactly. Okay. I'm 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 for one. I'm a fan of these berets. I think they look great. Yes, they're berets rather um, than mortar boards. Be- before we get into this, though, I want to make it super clear that over the past couple of days, Mouse has made. I think Mouse has has had as much trouble as as some of the rest of you guys in trying to make sure, make sure this stuff is going to go right Mm -hmm. because mouse hates this bullshit. (laughs) I love it. Oh, mouse hates it so much. Uh, but they understand like it's really important. So they're trying, but they hate it. (laughs) Also, we're going to go in there. No joke answers to the queen. No, (laughs) no funny one liners. Save it for discord. So all, (laughs) all, all, All I'll say is, all I'll say is like, I actually think actor doesn't do too badly here, like in the study, because rules and regulations is something that he's really familiar with, mm-hmm. um, and answering to authority is something he's very familiar with. So mm-hmm. actually, I think that he grasps this quite well, mm-hmm. I and like he's him. he's got the like he's had in the past no problem deferring to power. That was his job. Yeah, I I think I think Mouse is like they're really good at memorizing all the stuff they need to memorize. I think the difficulty that mouse has in this situation is coming off as sincere. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Okay. Uh, so Ramla, you know, very nervously, make sure you're all dressed properly. Um, her and red briar, she wears like Ramla wears, um, very traditional looking, uh but very intricately detailed um like middle eastern looking robes um along with uh also a um a pin of the messenger's authority and the same kind of hat as you guys um let me see if i can find what i'm talking about no i think i know what you're talking about i can see it in my head Okay. Um... Like one of those, like it, it, like a one of those robes that like crosses over the front, but it's like kind of flowy in the back. A little bit, yeah. Cool. Um... <clears throat> I imagine it as being like striped, like red and green, mm-hmm. in my head. You guys are talking about the Am I thinking of the right sort of thing? <sighs> No, it's like, um... We're not talking about sorry. I'm just making no, sure. No, it's like, it's more common in, like, Afghanistan and places around along the Silk Robe Road. Um... Sorry, I, I don't know why this is important to me. Um... Uh, we'll, we'll come I'm back to it. Uh, Listen, I'm, I'm all about this cultural stuff. I'm into it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, should, we should get this right so we don't offend anyone. Okay. Also, this oh, will get cut out. That was aggressive. I just, I'm very conscious we don't offend anyone. I already offended the HTC guys. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help that one. Wait, I think I might have, um, have it on Pinterest. Hold on. What <sighs> color is it? Um, it will be, uh, purples and blues. Ooh. Um. You know what? Don't, don't type Afghanistan robe woman because you get some real weird shit. Yeah. It's fine at the front and then you get down below and it's like, that's just a woman in a bathrobe. 
I guess she's from Afghanistan. I assume. Yeah. Um, A lot of Moroccan stuff I'm finding. There you go. While, while we're doing this search, I imagine this, in, I imagine this is going to get cut out from the final thing. So I'm going to get myself a glass of water. That's fine. Okay. Take like, a quick break. This? Yeah. Are we doing an official bio break? Cause I yeah, do let's that. do that. Okay. Something like that? Eric? Uh, kind of. Here, I found it. Oh, nice. Okay. Someone is peeing hard. No, it's I think water. it's water. I thought you said that woman is peeing hard, like from the picture, and I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. You can't tell from the picture that that woman is peeing really hard? I mean, she's had to put her hands to her head. She peed so hard, she got a headache. She actually... So she, she, she's I haven't having, looked at the picture yet, so I'm she's just really confused. She's making the pee come out telekinetically. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm gonna take this opportunity to eat some pistachios. I'm gonna go grab some water too, actually. So how's everyone been? Yeah, you know. I'd say that pretty shy. It was a real shy week for me. Really? What happened? I'm better today. Oh, it's just it, it was been a real a real stressful week at work. Well, uh, I, just, I decided I that uh, at the very latest I will be putting in my two weeks on November. Um, um, Thanksgiving is on the 22nd this year, right? I don't know. I don't um, know. November 7th. That way, my very last day of work will be on November 21st, which is the day before. Oh, I'm sorry. No, sorry. No, uh, November 6th. That will my last day of work will be uh, November 20th, so that... Um, I specifically am not there for the day before Thanksgiving because fuck my manager. Why? Well, I'm okay. Oh, I work in the meat department at a grocery store. Okay, that makes more sense to me now. And the day before American Thanksgiving is one of the busiest yeah. days of the year, and I want I want to give him a really big fuck you. So, well, if you want to take it off, someone else would. <clears throat> because I know that it's it's literally going to be leaving him in the lurch. Um, I don't care what happens to him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I just came back in on a weird time. Oh, I'm. I just uh, at the very latest, I'll be putting in my my two weeks on uh, November sixth. Nice. That way, that way, my last day is the day before the day before Thanksgiving. Nice. Oh, Eric, I love this look for the Ramla. Oh, my God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 10 good. out of 10 would respect. Yeah. But damn, Ramla looks like a badass. Mm -hmm. uh, Ramla is a badass. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, but she doesn't always look like a badass, though. Now she looks like one. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so for the audience, um, it's very geometric designs. Um common in like Bedouin culture and that sort of thing. Uh, and uh, yeah. That's... Well, no, really easy guys. If you want to, if you want to see it, go to pinterest.com forward slash pin forward slash four zero seven one five three. I'm walking away from that. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, too. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Ed, did you really I, um... walk away? Uh, what? Yep, Ed's gone. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh man, that was brilliant. I did a Captain Holt. Mm. Nice. Uh, Rebecca, are you back? <clears throat> okay, I'm back. Okay. It was just prolonged rustling. Um, Ed, are you oh, there? Oh, sorry. Ed's not here yet. <laughs> he literally <clears throat> just got up and walked away. I, I did say be our back. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> Uh, so I was reading the the rules and like everything for the original um, uh, uh, Blades in the Dark. Mm -hmm. 
I am in love with one of the classes in this game where it, I, I don't know the name of it, but it's like the, uh, like the diplomat class, like the, the, the face class. Mm -hmm. Because they have a power where you can make a pact, and if, and, and if the other person breaks the pact, they get cursed. Ooh. And it sounds so cool. And it happens whether or not like they, they mean to like enter into this curse pact, as long as you shake hands with this person after making an agreement. And if either of you break the pact, you get cursed. Nice. You better fucking believe I've been making pacts with everyone. <laughs> you get a pact, and you get a pact, and you get like, a pact. Yeah, and I, I and I think the curse is a like level three harm. So if you if you break this oh, curse, shit. you get you get a serious serious harm. Oh, what is the pact like? Could it be like we're making a pact that we're best friends forever? If you break this pact, you'll die. Like basically, yeah. I mean, they're, they're like they're not there. There's there's not really a description as to like what kind of thing it is. As long as you make a pact and you shake on it, if either of you break the pact, you get a level three harm. <clears throat> It's a little well, bit crossroads, so Demony. Yeah, if you break the pack, you get a level three harm as well. Yeah, yeah. But if they break it, they get a level three. <clears throat> yeah. And you better believe that I'm making packs with literally everyone. Everyone I see gets a pack, and it'd be a so much fun. Shake except my hand. when I Do eventually, <laughs> except when I inevitably break a pack because I'll have so many, and I'll eventually have to pick between two of them, and then I'll die. But it'd be cool. Nice. <laughs> Right. I have returned. Welcome back. Welcome back. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, I made you leave. It's okay. I went and got snacks. So picking back up again. There's a note to myself that here's where we're picking up. Um, so yeah, so Romla is dressed in very geometric designs, um, common in Bedouin cultures, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, that's what she's wearing. Um, now... Come on. Uh, as for Redbriar, uh, this is, I guess, similar to what she's wearing, where it's very kind of fancy, Ooh. but also very patchworky and like almost anachronistic uh, dress with like well, check marks and like weirds amount of lace um, and like a lot of red in it, um, but also like different shades of red. Um, and different kind of, like, things going on with it. Um, yeah, so you're all dressed and ready to go when this songbird arrives. Is there anything anyone wants to go before you do before you leave? Okay. Uh, I don't no. think so. <laughs> I'm right. very nervous. All right. So you, you feel a little awkward walking uh, the streets, but thankfully you don't have to go very far. Uh, the songbird quickly leads you to the path underground, which uh, you're reasonably able to get to pretty quickly. Um, and it leads you into a specific tunnel of the path underground, which soon starts to kind of like twist and turn in a way that it usually shouldn't. Um, vines, leaves, and thorns uh, etch their way out of the tiled floors. And soon you are walking ac across a floor of leaves out into a grand amphitheater. All along the stone amphitheater, there are Fae, dressed in official-looking robes, flowing dresses, and all the finery in between. On one of the lowest levels of the amphitheater sits Copper Creek, his chin and jaw still bent in a permanent copper scowl. He glares at you as you enter. Which one was Copper Creek? The guy that we beat up at the bar in the goblin market. Oh, uh, yeah. But we did help him get out. I wasn't there we for did. it. You did? Oh, uh, we did, and then we put him inside the door and made him go to the police department. Yup. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, no. And, and I'm the bad person. That we fuck with up. everyone. <laughs> we fuck with everyone. Oh, my God. I think Bishop just stares at him wide-eyed, like, oh, no. <laughs> like, oh, shit. <laughs> My mistakes have come back to Stephen, haunt me. Stephen definitely kind of leans over to, to Bishop and says, uh, who's who's that? Um, remember the Don't... guy in the cop? Never mind. I'll tell you later. Oh, all right. You guys are psychic. Speak to each other oh, yeah. through the echo. <laughs> oh, yeah. <And> the <laughs> Bishop forgets because she's so stunned. Mm -hmm. Um, 
Uh, she says, remember that guy it, that we, like, pulled out of the goblin market with all those people with guns? You went uh, to the goblin market without me? No, you were there. You just you escaped before all the guns happened. Yeah. No, Stephen and Myra were at Ikea. Yeah. No, no, you weren't. No, you were there. I was there? Because that's why you invented your universal translator. Oh, yeah. I remember yeah. now. Okay. Yeah, anyway. you, guys, you guys just got out before the guns happened. Okay. We we rescued him. May or may not have pushed him into the police station and ditched him. Why would you do that? Because he's I, not a good person. He's not a good person, and also we're assholes. Didn't he attack you? I mean, you're not wrong. All right. <laughs> I know. Didn't the whole thing start with him attacking you, Rebecca? Mm. Uh, questionable. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean. I may or may not have been threatening, ish, with uh, my presence. I, I distinctly sure, remember Acton slamming his head against the bar, and, and I'm pretty that. sure that was, and I'm pretty sure that was the first act of violence that happened then. So, <clears throat> <laughs> I like the idea of you all like trying to piece this back together in the echo as you're remembering him. <laughs> We're like, oh, it's that guy. Oh yeah. All right. Uh, so yeah, um, so that Copper Creek is at one of the lowest levels of the amphitheater, uh, but above the rest, at the highest point of the amphitheater, on kind of the highest level, and you guys know what I mean when I talk about an amphitheater, right? It's like the, yeah. the stage is at the bottom, and then the, there yeah. are like stone levels that go up. That yeah, like the, like the Greek one. <clears throat> exactly. Um, so yeah, so above the rest, at the highest point of the amphitheater, there is a throne, a chair made from filigreed bronze that gives the appearance of delicate leaves and branching paths. Looking at it, you can see that the filigree runs throughout the amphitheater, connecting the throne to every layer of the chamber through almost infinite delicate branches. This sounds beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Upon the throne sits her highness, the queen, the high queen Cassiopeia of Leaves. She sits, or more accurately, reclines on her throne, her legs thrown over one armrest as her back lays against soft-looking cushions. She takes small, mincing bites out of a red apple, while a tall man in a plain suit whispers in her ear. Uh, so, Mouse, weirdly enough, that guy oh, fuck. <laughs> from the gala... <gasps> In his boring ass suit, with his boring haircut and his boring gangly appearance, for some reason is here, whispering in the oh, ear of the fuck. High Queen Cassiopeia of Leaves. Oh my god. <clears throat> I imagine I imagine we feel like a sudden wave of panic through the echo mm -hmm. of just uh, for for mouse. And actor's first response is in the echo just gonna be just gonna be, what did you do? Steven, through the echo, is going to say, don't worry, you guys said that he was a bad guy. You can't do that much. Um, real Steven quick, guy. you also feel a bit like the biggest, like, aesthetic girl crush on C Queen Cassiopeia's, like, whole look right here. Just all of it. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh my god, I love her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, is Mouse <clears throat> going to react at all to this? No, mouse. Mouse keeps their mouse keeps their cool, uh, ridiculously. Like outwardly, nothing. Inwardly, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Um, Ramla <laughs> tries to soothe all of you, saying it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine uh, through the echo. I'm just so nervous. <laughs> okay. So yeah. So the man with the ear of the queen seems at odds in the assembly almost as much as you are. He wears no finery and does not appear to be a fay. Instead, he only wears a very plain, simple black suit, the kind you might find at any mid-level manager wearing in a corporate office. He smirks as he whispers something to the queen, and she laughs, a quiet, tittering noise. She pats the man on the cheek lovingly and dismisses him with a casual wave of her hand. The man straightens, a smile on his face. As he catches your eye, Mouse, he winks and then wanders off into the assembly to watch the proceedings. Oh my god. Oh my 
guys are fucked. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna die. <laughs> Why is he winking at me? Oh my god, who is this guy? I have a bad feeling I know who this guy is, and I'm really upset about it. <laughs> we'll find out. Um, Next week. As the queen sees you, uh, she focuses her attention on Ramla. Uh, she looks at Ramla with a warm, almost maternal smile and casually lets the half-eaten apple slip from her fingers so that it goes tumbling down the amphitheater row after row before arriving finally at your feet. Ramla, for her part, clears her throat and addresses the assembly. My queen, your highness Cassiopeia of the Court of Leaves, Lady of Fall and Harvest, Protector of the Fairy, Lord Empress of the Goblin Kind, She of Bounty, Plenty, and Autumn, This humble servant begs your indulgence to present the messengers your eminence has summoned. And she, uh, being uh, Romlud, gives a very low curtsy uh, as she says these things. The queen nods almost imperceptibly, and Ramla motions for each of you uh, to kind of stand in a line like you practiced uh, and make your introductions. So how would you guys like to introduce yourselves? How are, how are, we, how are we supposed to introduce ourselves? Um, <laughs> I'm not going to hold it against you guys. Like This is mostly for just like character building. Um, Actually, let's let's do some rolls to find out how well you guys oh. practice etiquette here, shall we? Oh God! You can flash back okay. if you need to to remember everything. Uh, so, who would like to go first? Oh fuck it, I'll go first. All right. Um, what do I do? I would say this would be either be. I could see an argument for finesse, consort, or sway for this oh sweet 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 sweet. i'll do a consult okay things i'm not uh, uh position uh risky oh effect uh standard <clears throat> oh my god do i get any bonus dice because i'm good at this kind of stuff no shut up nick did i ask you um not really. Damn it, Nick, you swayed him. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, Ash. Oh, God. You all know it's a two. A two. Hey, it's not the worst it could be. Um, it's pretty bad, though. May I recommend ruining your intimacy with the group by re-rolling? <laughs> what intimacy with the group? I No one likes me at the moment. <laughs> Make it worse? Nah, that's fine. Um, all right. You can always resist the consequences, remember. Um, so I think Acton kind of stumbles a little bit over his uh, introduction. Um, and it's... You, you get it out eventually, but it's kind of messy. And like, <coughs> you're a little bit rattled just from the sense that you're getting from Mouse and everyone else. Um so yeah, so let's let's start a new clock, shall we, guys? Oh um, my God, no! What's don't the do opposite this to us. of Queen's favor? <laughs> hey, Rebecca, Queen's how do you feel disfavor. about clocks? How do I feel about clocks? I used to love clocks. <laughs> Weird. I love clocks, but not these clocks. Uh, I forgot Rebecca said that that one time. <laughs> <laughs> I love clocks. I love clocks. You don't. You don't have to convince me of clocks. <laughs> Can you see the labels on these? We or cannot. The names? Okay, let me fix that. <clears throat> there we go. All right. Queen's displeasure would probably be the opposite. Or it's disfavor, I have decided. Go, 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 go. Oh, oh. Neat, great, awesome, sweet. I'm so nervous. You're so fucked. All right. Guys, we're not we're not good people. <laughs> All right, and that gets two ticks on Queen's disfavor as she kind of frowns at your <clears throat> sloppy introduction. Um, unless you resist it, right? Unless you resist it. 
You would roll again with uh, stress. Excuse me. This would roll again with uh, this would resolve. Be resolve, yeah. Okay, I sorry. There's a fucking helicopter going on. Sorry, there's a helicopter flying overhead. For some stupid reason. Um, no, I am going to resist it. Okay. Uh, and just resolve. Oh, mm-hmm. right so I have three. Uh, right, 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 right. Uh, no bonus die. Five. Five. Good. So one stress. Um, so you kind of recover at the end of it and look up at the queen and. Uh, she kind of studies you for a moment and then seeing your resolve and she decides to let the insult pass. Um, for the rest of you, would you maybe like to do a group action? Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yes. yes. <laughs> that'd be good. For the... I, can I lead? If you I like. hope I, you will fail. Can I, I, can I lead with finesse? Uh, sure. So everyone will roll finesse. And then I'm you'll... into this. Good. I don't have any finesse, so you're gonna take. You're, you're probably gonna take some stress. So that's I'm okay fine. with that. I, I'm currently sitting at zero stress, and I got three finesse. So hell yeah, take the stress. Do, do you want to roll first, Stephen? Uh, I think you guys have to roll, don't you? Everyone has to roll. Everyone has okay. to roll. So I'm taking three stress or two stress. No, no, you're not taking any stress no, no. yet. You roll, okay. and then we see what happens. Okay. If anybody fails, if anybody gets three, it's three or less, you take one stress for everyone that failed. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm assuming this is risky? Yes. Uh, standard effect? Mm-hmm. Any bonus dice? Nope. Boom. Six. Oh, nice. 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 All right, I'm going next. I rolled a th- oh, well. three. Hey, you know what? <laughs> I needed a three or greater, right? Ah, everyone got threes or greater. Well, I got a, I got a four. But, uh, nice. Uh, Mouse, no, you take, a failure, my guy. You, you take one stress. Yeah, you take one stress from That's Mouse. Fine. So, how does Steven oh. kind of lead this action? Uh, so, finesse is employing subtle misdirection or sleight of hand. Mm-hmm. I, I, can I can I also say that that has to do with with verbal sleight of hand sure. and misdirection? Yes. Uh, so, so Steven, so Steven, being a quote unquote doctor, is quite adept at just making up just tons of garbage constantly and and getting away with whatever he can mm-hmm. and he has um and he actually see, he sees Acton fumble so hard that he takes it upon himself to introduce the rest of the crew mhm um, I just stress how hard I fumble. Thank you. I'm not stressed. <laughs> oh, I, I apologize if I if I if I was fumbled so hard, guys. All right. Yeah. Uh, uh, and he 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 takes it upon himself to step forward and uh, using the flowery language. Also, his work with the uh, Universal Translator has given him a better understanding of the intricacies of face speech. Mm-hmm. So he, he uses all that knowledge to uh, introduce as uh, introduce the group in the best possible light. Okay. Um, excellent. Um, the queen uh, uh, smiles and laughs happily and claps slightly after you've finished your introduction. And she says, oh, Ramla of the winds, you truly have brought me something amusing this time. Oh. I think I like the way this one speaks. Perhaps we will keep him as a jester. Uh, <laughs> Steven's eyes go wide, but he doesn't say anything yet. She laughs at seeing your eyes go wide, and then she motions uh, for things to continue. <clears throat> um... And then as your introductions have now finished, she regards you each with kind of an appraising look up and down. And then she smiles and she says, 
We thank you, our most faithful servant, Ramla of the Wind. You have discharged the task put to you most excellently. Our eminence begs the courtesy of these fine messengers, because as the story has already been relayed to us by our servant, we nonetheless wish to hear it from our messengers themselves, as the tale may yet lighten our spirits and distract us from our woes. Oh no. I'm like too um, nervous to do any rolls. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> oh gosh! Um, who wants to speak? Mouse isn't very good at speaking. Unless We're it's lying, Stephen is not good. <laughs> okay. Um, Bishop will step forward. Hold oh, on, boy. I have to compose. I, I know. I have to compose myself. So I don't who's, say, who's got I good think. consort or sway? <laughs> I have a two in consort. That's you know. That's what I'm kind of banking on, but it's not. <clears throat> Two is not the best. Um, okay. Do you want me to actually like say it, or no. do you want me to like? It, okay. it's, up, it's up to you. You can summarize what you want to do, or say literally what you want to say. Let me. Um, how about this? I'm going to. I, I'll, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to downplay the librarian's involvement. Or at least say like we uh, we use them rather than we partnered with them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I want to play that up a little bit more than uh, yeah. We worked out a deal with another faction to like help us do this, um, and I'm going to leave out a lot of explosiveness. Gotcha. It's a very it was very it was very efficient. We were in we we were out. We <laughs> took care of Oakenheart. We got rid of the drugs uh it was a very clean operation i really don't think it could have gone any better um so yeah your highness and then she does like extra curtsy right okay <laughs> all right um would you like to uh go ahead and make that consort roll for me yeah is it risky standard it's risky standard okay oh, you can God. do it i believe in you Oh, oh man. Actually, you know what? I'm going to push myself and take two stress. Okay. Can I do that? Yeah, that's fine. Or okay, you, so could go for, you could ask for a devil's bargain. Well, I don't think do you, you want to do that bargain? right now. Okay, I know. I'm, I'm just but saying it's an option. Also, I, I forgot to give you guys an intimacy at the start of the session, so I'm giving you one now. Okay. Aww. Um, okay, that's one extra die when you Yeah. Uh, push, push yourself. yourself. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Come on, come on, come on. A five. A five. Hey. Good. Nice. That's a bonus die sucked. <laughs> it was a one. <laughs> All right. Okay. So we will move that up one. <coughs> and we will move that up two. Okay. So, yeah, you, you give a good accounting of your actions. Um, you notice the queen frowns very noticeably when you even make a mention of the librarians. So you, like, very quickly you know, downplay their involvement as much as possible. Um, okay. But, yeah, so there's a slight consequence of one tick on Queen's disfavor, which you could okay. resist, resist if you wanted to. I feel like one... Yeah, but uh, one's, one's, one's not terrible. One's not terrible. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna... Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. <clears throat> she says, we thank you for accounting, dear messenger. Uh, but still... Some questions uh, trouble us that we hope you might have the indulgence to answer for us. Um, of course, of course, your highness. Mm -hmm. Another uh, fay. This one uh, is a kind of an. You no, know, you know what it is actually. It's actually um, a goblin. It's like one of the little toad-looking guys you saw in the goblin market, and he looks very old and wizened. And he has, like, a, this, like, old cane, but he's dressed in very official-looking robes. He's got, like, a long white beard, and he's carrying all of these, like, scrolls with him. Uh, and the queen beckons door? to him, uh, and he kind of waddles over and holds out one of the scrolls to the queen. Uh, which she takes and 
lets fall so that again it just rolls down the amphitheater steps Jesus. and she like begins to read it and like she reads for a few minutes before even saying anything and then she says ah here we have it we have heard from our servant that you began your quest by first turning to the mortal constabulary to, to obtain from them what little knowledge they have gleaned of our affairs a wise course, in our opinion, but our thoughts are worried that perhaps you were not as silent as you could have been. We remarked, throughout our servant's tale, of many times our messengers did not did seem to involve the mortal constabulary. And at this, she, like, looks directly at Acton. And thereby <laughs> risk their attention upon our fair court. Perhaps, though... Our lovely messengers will put our royal thoughts to ease. Oh god, I think Mel steps forward. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh god. <clears throat> um Mouse uh Yeah, so so Mouse says, uh, your highness, um we were very aware of our mistakes in involving the constabulary. Uh, that is why uh, a, a few weeks ago, I think it's weeks probably in, in game. Yeah. Um, a few weeks ago, uh, we uh, made an effort to make sure that any of our activities uh, and the activities of the Fey world overall uh, were eliminated from any records at the police department. Um, we not only made sure of this, but covered our tracks in uh, making sure that they didn't even realize that something was taken from them. Um, if you understand, Your Highness, we did our best to, uh, to make sure that this world is as secret as possible. And then Mouse also curtsies. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see a roll for that. Uh, oh my god! Oh my god! I'm so nervous. I feel oh like for this, it might be a little more risky. Uh, but you could use something like study or tinker if, like, you're trying to impress using like the actual like technical things you did. Or, yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah, okay. So it'll be a little more difficult. Um, we're going to take it down to desperate for that, but you can use either of those. Okay, I'll use tinker and I'll go desperate. Okay. Don't for, don't forget to mark it. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Do I, do I, I don't get another bonus die from that, though, because I'm not actually using technology, correct? No. All right, here we go. Oh, God. Five. Five. Nice. Good. A lot of fives. Okay. Uh, good, good, good. Um, choose side. So only one tick on Queen's disfavor as you do bore her a little bit with the technical details and accounting of how exactly you managed to do this. Um, but she seems satisfied with your answer overall. Uh, would you like to resist the consequence? No, I think that's fine. Okay. So that is the first one checked off. Do I get any favor? Um, I'm only I'm using favor in a different way. This when she asks you specific questions, there are specific things that will happen depending on whether okay, you gotcha. succeed or fail. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, so the next one, uh, she nods and uh, appreciates your explanation. She says, "Very well. Now, a name sticks in our memory of the tale. Here it is, Glimwing." Tell us, what did become of this naughty subject of ours? For were they not the one who sold our dust to the mortals, and thereby put our court at risk? What became of this glimwing? Or, if there is no more yet to the telling, what, in the opinion of our loyal messengers, should our royal highness do to snare this vexing, wayward subject? Oh no, you guys. I have an idea, but if I don't want to. I have an idea of how to handle this, but I don't want to take over another question if you guys don't 
my, go, 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 my, go. my problem is that I, Edward, know how to say how to do this, but Stephen doesn't have the skill to back it up. Okay. In the in the echo, Mouse is going it, because we've established that the echo, our communication happens a lot yeah. faster than it actually does. Yes. Mouse is going to suggest that we take responsibility, but then we also offer our services to track her down. Glimwing is dead. Nope. No. No. Who did we Glimwing kill then? Oh, we killed Glimwing. Iron Dude, right? Yeah, Glimwing is the the drug dealer that we met at the at Arcadia. Okay. The person that Teague worked for. Okay. And, uh, and Bishop knows Teague that told us Teague that she said left. That she that they they are their pronouns uh, already skipped town. Yeah. Okay. But it may be possible uh, so to yeah, track think, them down. So I I I think Mouse. It, that's the idea that Mouse has. That's a good choice. Is, there, is, there, is everyone in it? Is everyone in agreement? Yeah, well, and I would argue with them that we can do that, but also we point out that like we cut off the head of the the Hydra here. You know? Yeah, I, we, we, yeah, wait, not that yeah, one. Yeah. Wait, not that one. Not that cut one. the head That's of the snake. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, w I was okay. going to say. I was going to say. Yeah, we we should emphasize the fact that the that Glimwing yes was selling, but. Glimwing no longer has a source and therefore is not as much of a threat, but that we're going to go find them. I yeah. would agree. And I think that the person to talk about this, I think Acton should say this because Acton's the police. Acton is the constabulary, as she says. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, that's probably for the best. Okay. So uh, I just, I'm really bad at rolls with this. Um, sorry, wait, truck going past. <clears throat> So yeah, so I'm just, we're still in the echo. So basically the plan is I'm going to say, um, yeah, uh, Glimwing is still out there. Uh, I'm not going to mention that we've got any intel, because we do, but I'm not going to mention that we've got any, because I don't want to get T in trouble. Mm -hmm. um, um, and then I'm also going to say that um, we have, a, you know, we've come across Glimwing before, we've got the expertise, we cut the head off the snake, uh, so Glimwing isn't um, as big a threat, but we will for, you know, uh, to put the Queen's mind at rest and to um, to be, you know, the loyal subjects that we are, uh, we will hunt down Glimwing and bring her uh, uh, in front of the, bring her, bring them mm -hmm. in front of the Queen uh, for justice. All okay. good? Sounds good. Uh, one thing I will just caution you guys <clears throat> is, Let's flash back for a moment. Ramla did mention that you guys should not promise to do anything that you don't intend to carry through on. Like, the consequences of that are, like, the highest consequences there can be. You are not supposed to break your promises to the Queen of Leaves. <clears throat> I, I'm I serious. Think I'm, I'm the, like, we'll do this. I'll be, I'm fine. I think this, yeah, I think this is a good plan. I think that... Just don't give a time frame. <laughs> yes. As long as you don't give a time frame, as long as you aren't dead, you haven't not followed through yet. All right. Fair enough. I mean, okay, but yeah. All right. So but yeah, roll... but like consensus, are we all right hunting down Glimwing? Maybe don't make the promise, but maybe ask her, like, ask the queen if they, if she would... <clears throat> want us to do that no i think we just offer it yeah i think we offer it actually, uh... actually if, if i may um we let the queen know that the source of the drugs is gone and the and that the whole entire operation has been destroyed and then ask the queen what she wants us to do about limwing that way it's the queen deciding whether we should do it or not and we have the option of saying, yes, I we will do this, so, or no, we won't. So one thing I'll point out is that she, she phrased her words very carefully in the sense that, what do you think I should do? And you get the oh, sense that she does damn. not want to get, in, get a question back from this. No, it's going to be, we think you should use us. That's the answer. Yes, yes. <laughs> Okay. Um, okay. Sorry, so yeah, sorry to rain on your parade. No, like, that's that was... legit. I, I I didn't realize that she had been that specific. So that's on me. Okay. Um. So that'll be the 
that will be Acton's answer. Acton will say, um, uh, "Your Highness, like we uh, we've cut the head off the snake. We've destroyed the source of the drugs, uh, and Glim Wing was only a dealer uh, from my time uh, from from my time in London. Uh, I've I've got um, I, I've got expertise in." As we were tackling the drug trade. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that sounds weird. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I've got expertise in this area, um, and uh, I think we've proven to be effective. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we, uh, uh, with your permission, obviously, uh, we we are loyal subjects. We will um, we will track Glimwing down, and we will bring her to the court uh, uh, to sit at your judgment okay all right uh go ahead and make your roll <sighs> hey guys all ready to say i'm sorry oh no i'm so sorry now i'm push so yourself. nervous i am actually gonna push myself on this i'll take two stress and push myself <sighs> push it. Uh, is it risky still stop it rebecca sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh standard effect yes and I will push myself. You're right, Rebecca. Shut off. It's a four. Uh, yeah, it's a good, good thing good. you pushed yourself. Good thing yeah. you pushed yourself because those first two are one and two. Uh... Okay. Um, so, again, just one tick on Queen's disfavor, but you successfully passed this question. Uh, and she smiles and nods um, <clears throat> when she hears that you'll track down Glimwing for her. She says, we would evermore be in the debt of our kind messengers. They would convey our subject Glimwing before us, alive, so that she may ease our minds and we may instruct them as to their duties in obedience. Oh, no. Okay. She continues on then, after a moment of again reading. She says, ah, here we are. And she focuses her attention on to Redbriar, who immediately kind of shrinks a little bit, uh, like almost taking a step backwards. She says, we see one of our kind, our kin, and we rejoice that she is brought back to us, safe and sound. Redbriar, child, we are so very relieved to see you again. Uh, Redbriar, after a moment, kind of composes herself. Uh, she blushes and she courtesies before the queen, uh, before she kind of stammers over her words a bit. And she says, y your humble subject is not worthy of such kindnesses, your highness. This one was saved by your loyal messengers, and so, too, I thank your highness for your mercy, compassion, and deliverance through their hands. Uh, it's you, you guys remember that she actually practiced these lines a couple of times with Ramla, uh, but even yeah. still, the answers seem almost stiff with her fear. Uh, the queen smiles a little devishly, devilishly, and she says, Of course, dear child. We welcome you home, and will bid you stay amongst your kin for a time. But then, we shall charge you with a most sacred duty. Our dear Ramla of the Winds has, uh, has been too often absent in her council, for want of putting our mind at ease in these current affairs. Therefore, we shall bid Ramla to remain with us for a time, and to devote herself to our service. Still... We would not leave our messengers without our counsel or our aid, and so we will generously bid you, Rosebriar, to remain with these messengers and act as our most esteemed envoy to them. Did the Wait, queen did, just did rename name her? Did, did the queen just rename, rename her? I, I think I fucked up. Her name is. Oh, okay. What's okay. her name again? <laughs> Redbriar. 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 Red Red I think I, I got confused when I was writing this. <gasps> while, we're while we're pausing, Nick, please turn your vibrate off. My dude, it's, it is so annoying. Well, then stop messaging the, the fucking message group. No. Jesus Christ, you guys. <laughs> just, 
Just move. Just move the phone to a not hard service. <laughs> what hard? It's on my lap. Where do you want it to go? I think it's Ed, you guys. I don't think it's Nick. No, it it's is not me. me. Uh, it, it is me. The All only right. other option I have is silencing my phone entirely, and I can't do that without leaving the chat. So hang on one second. I'll leave the chat, and then I'll do that. I don't think you have to leave the chat. On iPhone, you don't. I, I don't have an iPhone. Listen. I know. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, so the queen is going to take back Ramla, at least for a bit, <clears throat> and give you no. Red Briar. No. Okay, there Unless we go. Unless you guys want to do something about it. Um... What are we at for Queen's displeasure, disfavor? Steven's gonna stand, step forward. You're at three out of eight. No, 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 I humbly request that you allow Ramla to stay as our. What's the word I'm looking for? Edward is stumbling advisor. over his words. As our advisor, as she is also uh -uh. the caretaker of my no. child. No, guys, let this happen. I have a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> Is also the caretaker of my child, and I don't think I could find a better one. Okay, I'm not even going to make you roll for this. Here is the devil's bargain the queen is going to offer you. She will say, You have amused me, Jester, and as loath as we are to be parted from Ramla's company, we will allow her to stay with you for a time. Uh, say... Uh, um, and she like, uh, I, I don't know how the actual like math of this is going to work out, but basically she's going to say, stay with you for a time, uh, stay with us and you jester shall attend to us in her, ha in her absence. Like not all the time. Like she's saying, okay, you're going to trade your time for Romla's time. So when Ramna's not available, you have to be. Yeah. Specifically. So basically any time, yeah. Don't take it. Don't do it. Although, I will say, this is cut the recording because of the, also the sirens. Um, Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, 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 hold off. Hold off yeah, all the sirens. Out. Pass. But no, I'll, I'll do this just because it's out. But it's actually good for if Ed can't make a day, like, we should all have a good excuse in game, but this is actually a really good excuse for Ed that he's actually with the Queen. <clears throat> that's fair. That's yeah. true. Like, that's actually a really good uh, metagaming thing, but actually, it's a really good excuse. Like, we could all have an excuse, but actually, this could be Ed's. It's actually a really good in-game one that actually, yeah, we got Ramla. It's up to you, Ed. I accept. She claps her hands together and says, oh, no. very well, we, will, we are most pleased with this arrangement. Um, and she continues on, if there are no more objections. Uh, and she turns back to Redbriar. Or, yes, Redbriar is her name, come on. Uh, and so we welcome both our new jester and our dear child Redbriar back to our bosom, only <sighs> she kind of sighs wearily. We wish we had yet more wayward lambs to welcome. Our knights speak to us of others, lost from our court. While we hope we do not place too much of an expectation upon our loyal messengers, we wonder who else from our number was kidnapped by the vile fiends who stole Redbriar from us? Where are they now? And what fate do such thieves deserve? I'm not saying anything. Bishop's completely silent. Just they, uh, I, need, I need to double check here. Are they referencing T? Or are they referencing 
just like go and find some more people that have kidnapped. We want them back. She's saying is, I'm Red doing this in the echo. Uh, she's saying she's Red Redbriar was kidnapped. What happened to the people who kidnapped Redbriar? <laughs> who else was kidnapped? Like this is basically a thread that she cons- considers unfinished. And she wants you to kind of explain that, or like... Is she talking about Leviathan? Because that yes. guy up there is owns it. Yes. <laughs> oh my fucking god. So, can we out Leviathan, or... I'm saying this like... No. Um, the guy... We no, we, do, Mouse does. we do not do anything with... No, listen, Mouse has plans for, for Leviathan, and I am not going to let the queen take control of this. <laughs> Obviously, the situation is more complicated than maybe you first realized. But we have to answer the queen's question. Mm-hmm. Stephen's oh going to be completely silent, both in the echo and out loud, because he is absorbing what he just agreed to. So. <laughs> also, also, have fun explaining that to <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna... <laughs> Mary's the only one that has an explanation. Like, is the only one who knows the answer to this. We don't know anything, so we're just confused. No, we know it's Levi. We know it's Leviathan. We don't know that Leviathan is that big. Oh right. Oh, oh yeah. fuck! Only Mouse knows that. So I think Bishop's gonna start <sighs> to step forward. Mouse stops her. No. Uh. Uh-uh. Oh God, Mouse. Mouse take. I guess Mouse has to speak, and Mouse is gonna reveal this to all of their friends. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Do it. Okay, so Mouse steps forward, um, and god damn it, uh, visibly nervous, like very, very visibly nervous. Um, and Mouse says, uh, Your Highness, it has come to my attention and my attention only, um, as they gesture to their friends behind them, um, that. The people who took Redbriar uh, were an organization known as Leviathan Security. Leviathan Security is owned by the man who was standing behind you and whispering in your ear when we approached the, this, this court. Um, I have not yet learned the specific... Uh, I have a lot of questions myself as to what, as to what this means, uh, and if you will give me the opportunity, uh, I would be happy to investigate. Um, a murmur kind of runs through the crowd, and people kind of like turn and whisper at each other, and the queen looks at you in puzzlement, and like looks around her, and she says. <clears throat> What man do you speak of, dear messenger? Oh fuck! What the fuck? Did everybody else? Did did the rest of our group see this? See that man up there? Or was it just me? Oh Jesus, guys, guys! I don't think he's actually there. Yeah, the Stygian, I think, or something like that. Yeah, I think he's the physical manifestation of the, the Stygian. Um, did, yeah, the the rest did, of your group, you confirm quietly through the echo that yeah, you all saw that guy talking to her. You don't know what the fuck's going on. Uh, Mouse looks like stunned for a moment uh, and uh, looks extremely confused. Um, and uh, lowers their head uh, and looks back at their friends. Like physically, looks back at their friends and says. Uh, I'm sorry that the the four of us, perhaps due to our connection to the Echo, uh, beheld a man standing at your side, whispering in your ears. Um, you you laughed at something that he said, and then you waved him away. Um, perhaps there is something at play here that we have not fully understood. Okay. Um, time to make. This a check. for sure nods like next to Mouse, like backing Mouse up, not like saying anything, but yes. Also, we saw it just in case. Okay. Um, 
You can make an attune check for me here if you want. <clears throat> oh, okay, yeah, and I'm gonna, I, I will do that, and I'm going to take uh, stress to push myself because this is very important. Mm -hmm. This is a very stressful is this, conversation we're having. Is this risky, desperate? Um, I'm gonna say this is actually desperate because you're trying to convince someone that you saw someone talking to them that they didn't see. Yeah. Look at you, Nick, getting all the desperate rolls today. All right, and, he, and I get one bonus die because I'm adding one. Oh my god, here we go. Six! Six. Nice. Oh, nice. Ooh. Ooh. Didn't it feel oh, great man. to get a six? Oh, yes, it did, but I'm so stressed out. Okay. <laughs> Physically, not in character. Um, the queen, again, looks at you in puzzlement for a moment and then laughs and says, A strange matter, then. Uh, perhaps one you will deign to look into at a future time, messenger. For now, let us dismiss it, uh, that perhaps you saw some phantom of our magic, or something else. But if you do feel it serious, I invite you to investigate further. As for the matter uh, of Redbriar's consorts, or of those who were stolen, along with our Redbriar, uh, this Leviathan you spoke of, um, we are not familiar with it. Is it some mortal device? Uh, that is our understanding as well. Um, to be honest with you, your highness, we don't fully, uh, we have had not, not had many dealings with Leviathan, uh, our only interaction has been in rescuing uh, your subject, uh, Redbriar. Mm -hmm. She nods and says, Would our messengers be, as gra be so gracious as to put their queen's mind at ease and see and look deeper into this leviathan? Uh, of, of course, uh, your highness. Okay. So she now expects you to look into look into Leviathan. Oh Wait. boy! Also, can I just say I find that so buck wild that you just convinced the you just convinced the queen that some phantom is talking to her. She was like, "Nah, we'll deal with it later." Can, can I mean, I they're parents. <laughs> like this shit happens, you know. All right, can I ask a question? And I might have to re read through the lore again. But mm -hmm. the Stygian is that a, a messenger's echo specific thing, or is that also a Fey thing? Like, would she know what the Stygian was if we brought it up? There's like, you're you're not supposed to. A okay. She might she might get confused. Um, it varies from Fey to Fey because the messengers and the fairies are very interlinked. And so they share a lot of secrets that you're not, but they're, they're secrets you're not supposed to speak out loud to. Like, announcing right. in this room, <laughs> there is people. an evil Stygian force here that is trying to wipe us all out, and it was talking to your queen, would not be a good idea. Ain't, ain't, ain't the best plan I've ever had. Okay, uh, just checking. Okay. Oh, um, and it reminds me... Um, Sorry, to back up a little bit here, but Ed, uh, when Stephen yeah. agreed to, uh, you know, serve the queen, Ramla, through the echo, said thank you. And you could sense Aww. kind of some of her relief that she gets to Aww. stay with you guys. I love her. That's so, that's so sweet. Okay. Stephen smiles inside. Also, right. in... In game, uh, does this mean that uh, Redbriar is one of our co is one of our cohorts now? Um, she, yes, or she's an ally. Awesome! Yay! Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. We have to buy cohorts. Yeah, cohorts are like groups of people or experts. And oh, okay. She's not really either of those. You could turn her cool. into an expert. Like if you guys wanted a magic expert, like I would suggest Redbriar. But um. Yeah. Oh. For now, she's just kind of like so she, she's just like a fairy that is also your Aww. friend. Okay. Yay. So, uh, moving on, uh, the queen says, "But alas, as we have heard praises from our sweet red bride, <clears throat> we have also heard complaints from others of our subjects." 
she rolls her eyes to one of the lowest seats and stares at Copper Creek, who seems to shrink a little under her gaze. This servant of ours, Copper Creek, did complain of his rough handling at the hands of our messengers, claiming he was much abused, though to the telling of Ramla of the winds, he did, for the care of our messengers, escape certain death. But let us hear his complaints again. Perhaps they will move us more this time. Or perhaps they will wither in his throat, now that he accuses our messengers directly. I think Bishop, like, dead-eyes him, just... Yeah, I think he's gonna do the same. I'm trying to make himself look as big as possible. Just I want to say this. I want to say that all four of us, inclu- five of us, including Ramla, are just gazing at him with like these intense looks. Just, just intimidate the hell out of him. <laughs> like I dare you! I fucking dare you! <laughs> I love it. All right. Copper Creek <clears throat> rises to his feet and bows with a- almost a little too much respect to the queen before turning to sneer at the six of you. They do not wither, O oh blessed Mother, most high and noble queen of bounty, of diligence. For while this, your child, was under the protection of your goblin markets, these roustabouts, and he points at you, did assault my person, make false accusations upon me, and and compel me away from your loving embrace. Furthermore... I think... Oh, sorry. He, like, waits... To see if any of you are going to talk, and then says further. <laughs> <laughs> I hate him. Furthermore, once these messengers did realize their error, for I, Copper Creek, would never disobey the commandments of our most serene queen. I, Copper Creek, would never con- countermand and contrive to sell our dust to the likes of a mortal. I. I'm sorry. Copper Creek was instead betrayed by the blackguard and villain Oakenheart, and for my pains was nonetheless roughly abused. Uh, Once uh, <laughs> these did realize their mistake, they made no apology, but did convey me by foul magics into the very heart of mortaldom. They left me at the hands of the mortal constabulary, from which I only barely managed to escape, so as to protect my queen and court from the prying words and countenance of mortaldom. Over the echo, Stephen says, I bet he just walked out of the police department and wasn't even, like, bothered. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, through the echo, act his own words are, you think his name's Copper Creek? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, I think Bishop steps forward and says, uh, your highness, Queen Mother, look into your Queen heart. Mother? I... Queen Mother? <laughs> <laughs> Do not call her Queen Mother. He called that, Mother. That means, you, that, that means you're the mother of the queen. Mother he Queen mother. is the other he one. Call, well, he called her Mother whatever. Okay, anyway. This is just what he said. Mommy um, Cassiopeia. <laughs> mommy. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> Mama mommy. Cass. Mommy. Mama <laughs> Cass. <laughs> For those of you who haven't been reading the Discord chat, I've just been saying Bishop wants the queen to step on her. <laughs> the last, like, half an hour. Um, uh, she says, look into your heart. Understand that when we arrived, we didn't know Copper Creek from Glintwing to, from Oakenheart. Uh, we treated the matter very seriously until we realized that he was not truly our target. And then, unfortunately, your goblin market was overrun by people with dangerous weapons. And we managed to get out as safely and as quickly as we could with Copper Creek. We didn't have to do that, but we did because we recognized his innocence and also needed his help. And then we safely deposited him him back without revealing our location. And I think she just like smiles Copper Creek, and it's like, it's so good to see you again. And then the like, what? He just sneers right back at you. All right, uh, let's see that consort check. Hell, oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, <laughs> do I push myself? No, I'm not going to push myself. I don't need to. I believe in myself. Is this risky? Yes. Risky standard. Mm-hmm. Submit. Shit, shit. I believe in myself. I will literally never believe in myself again. Oh my god. <laughs> it was a three and a one. Oh, <laughs> oh no. So Alright. Uh, so the consequence of this, the queen will frown, and unless you <laughs> resist it, you're you will gain uh, two more clicks on the queen's disfavor. What will that put us at? I can't see the clocks on uh, that. App. It will put you at uh, five out mm. of eight. It'll put us oh. more disfavor than favor. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to resist. Okay. Uh, with Where's... resolve. Yeah. So I just hit resolve. There's not a resist button specifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just no, resolve. Press, press resolve. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> well. That's a lot of stress there. One, two, three, That's four, five, stress. five, and I'm maxed out. I'm traumatized. Are you really? Well, no, I'm you're not... You're about to be traumatized. Yeah. I've... Is it up to it or past it? I have decided, you go past it? I've decided that it's past it. I think the rule in the original is that if you hit up to it, but in, this is my game, I decide what happens, and it's if you go, go okay. past it. Because it feels... Right, I'm... I want to encourage you guys to get right up to that line. Okay, good news. I got right up to that line and stopped. <laughs> and uh, I think what we learned from this is that Bishop uh, is going to stop talking. Might be just, a good idea. Until, until I, like, I like to imagine that, that Bishop get, just got flustered over, mm -hmm. over being this close to the queen and talking to her directly. Yeah. Oh well, and God. she's like also like a little bit at Creek because like we did not have to get him out of there. Right. So what actually happened, what happens is after Copper Creek finish his thing speaking, like he turns back to the queen because you're supposed to let the queen always get a chance to speak before you speak. But Bishop was so kind of like inflamed a little bit that she just kind of like went off and was like, nah, uh <laughs> Yeah, exactly. All of those fancy words I say, replace them with like actual like just like normal speaking. She is not being flowery at all. She's just mad. <laughs> it's, it's up to you. I mean, like the flowery speech isn't the problem. The problem is, is that you it slightly interrupted the, interrupted the queen. Okay. Um, so fair. what she does is she kind of like stares you down for a minute and like you're kind of like oh shit but like you make some curtsy or you do some sign that like you were flustered and like she decides to let the insult pass uh, so she's going to like basically ignore entirely what you just said and said she rolls her eyes to the rest of you kind of ignoring Bishop right now and says and you our messengers how would you answer these charges of our servant Copper Creek places upon you? Did you abuse him over much? Leave him at the mercy of mortals? And if so, for what reason? <clears throat> Lastly, while we will note that we will have heard no complaint from our loyal goblin servants, we wonder if you did, in fact, breach the sacred peace of our goblin market. And if so, for what purpose? So, um... It's not a flashback, but I just I can't remember what happened. Mm -hmm. So I just want to I want to just go back and just be so. Um, when uh, Bishop I, went over I, to Glim I can, I can say in in about three words, uh, in not three words, but in a very very short sentence, what happened back then. Yeah, go on. So, well, say it to me first, because I actually want to. I actually want to know. Oh no, I I know, I know. I'm kind of trying to I'm trying to think of the correct language to use here. Um, Wait for it. Wait for it. Um, Acton escalates things too quickly. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem that we face in this entire situation right now. It's Acton escalating things too quickly. Why are you going to do that? I thought you were preparing to say something to the queen, and I was like, "You're not saying that, are you?" So did I actually. No, um, but but I, I can't I can't remember what actually happened. Like so, Bishop was talking to Copper Creek. Yeah. So basically, if I remember right, and jump in to correct me if you want, but um, 
Bishop went over to Copper Creek to kind of like figure him out and like Copper Creek tried to blow her off. Um, and then she pressed him a bit and, and he was like, look, don't fuck He was with reaching me. for He was a, reaching like, for, something, for something. Like yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That was it. Because I was like, I don't, I wouldn't have attacked him without like, uh, cause I, I remember like slamming his head into the, into the table. But mm. I was like, I think I did that to protect Bishop. That's the only reason he would have done it. Yeah. And I think what was happening is he well, pulled a knife out. And he was reaching Bishop, for one. He was yeah. reaching for a knife, and I grabbed him, and I was like, no, it's not going to happen. Actually, I just want to say what really happened, because it's actually important to me for my point of pride, is I slammed his hand on the table, and then when yes. he was being an asshole, you slammed his head on the table. So. Yes. Okay. Very good. Oh, next day again. All right, so how, how are you going to answer the queen again? Because she's decided to kind of ignore Bishop's comments, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Everything I said was factually accurate. I'm it, just was. it was. I'm it was to... a good answer. It's so just I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, um, whilst we, uh, uh, I'm going to say that we uh, were in Goblin Market, and um, the only the only reason we uh, we used force in Copper Creek was um, because uh, was as uh, was preemptive. He he was uh, about he was in the process of attacking um, my he, uh, you know uh, one of your loyal subjects. And I motioned to a Bishop. <clears throat> um, uh, <clears throat> the only other force we used in uh, the Goblin Market was to protect. Uh, was to protect your loyal subjects at the hands of was it who who actually attacked us? I don't know that we ever found out. I think it was Leviathan, wasn't it? You no, I thought it was the guys. I thought it was what's his face's guys. They yeah, it was. Russian it was. You're right. You're right. And they had some machine guns, and they were. And, and they were the guys that we saw at the at the bathhouse, right? <clears throat> Probably. Yeah, but we don't know who they are. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. And I think Mouse steps forward in order to uh, to explain why we dropped him off at the police station, mm-hmm. because that because that was Mouse's idea. Um, I think well, Mouse steps forward. Uh, oh, wait, wait. He says, well, "I'm not finished yet." Oh, so okay. I'm, I'm not finished. Oh, so I, I legitimately am not finished. Uh, but what he says is, um, uh, whilst we did um, transport him. Uh, using uh, one of our doors to the local constabulary. I'm not going to dispute it. We did not transport him into the hands of the local constabulary. It was, um, uh, if you pardon my language, uh, it was uh, the, <laughs> it was in the public area at the front by the front door where quite easily he could have just left as we and did think- all the time. And I think instead of uh, Mouse stepping forward, I think Mouse will talk through the echo for you, just for one person to talk. Um, I think it's worth it, it, I think it's worth adding that it was an effort to dissuade him from continuing his illegal yes. activities, which then acted will say to, to spook him, not to actually get him arrested. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, Mouse, do you want to add in w- what you did no. about the Goblin Market? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Mouse, yeah, yeah, Mouse will step forward and say, um, uh, as reparations for the damage that was done to the Goblin Market as a result of our uh, of our escape, um, uh, I uh, made it a point to send um, uh, repairs uh, and new equipment, better equipment, uh, to to. to uh, make the place a better place than it was before in flowery language. <laughs> okay. Um, very good. Yeah. Uh, when you mentioned that, I think the goblin by the queen, like she beckons to him and like, he comes over and like, he croaks out a few words and like gestures to something on the scroll and she nods. Um, so yeah, Acton, go ahead and make a roll for me. Uh, do you want to help out with this mouse? Do you want to take a stress? And... Oh my god! Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah, I'll do that. Is it? Is it going to be consort? Uh, yes. This is the only one I got stuff in. It's okay. consort and it's risky. Risky standard effect or limited or standard? And I take a bonus dice. Mm-hmm. Four. 
Four. Okay. Um, thank, thank you for helping me there, Jesus. All right. This, uh, it, it is only four, so unless you resist it, it's going to tick up twice again. But you do succeed. Can we split that that stress between us, between the two of us, if we, um, yeah, if we, if we resist it? Um, Hold on, I got three. Hmm. I'm gonna say no. One one of you okay. can take the stress for the other, but you can't split it up. I'll 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 take the stress. I've I've got three on me. Okay, okay cool. I've got four, so I'm pretty low too. All right. Go and I've got three and... in resolve. All right. Go ahead and make the resolve check. Six. Nice. nice. Right. <laughs> um, Why you? Why not me? Zero stress. <laughs> I did a better job with you. Uh. Uh, yeah, the queen like frowns a little bit at you putting him into uh, the constabulary's hands, um, but she nods and says, uh, "That was uh, my loyal goblins did inform me that our messengers' reparations were sufficient uh, and generous, and so we commend you uh, for properly representing our most royal beneficence and generosity." Uh, this queen is curious, though. You say the public area of the uh, constabulary. What? Where in particular was uh, Copper Creek conveyed? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> uh, um, oh, I'm, I'm, I am going to be a bit. I, I'm going to be a bit reverent when I say it to her, um, uh, and I'm going to say. Uh, uh, to the place where we uh, were, we uh, used to infiltrate their um, uh, infiltrate the establishment, and I'll just say it's the it's the toilet, okay. the the restroom or something like that. I'm sorry about it. The water closet. Yeah, you you use a nice word for restroom. The lavatory. The powder room. Uh, and when you say it, like the there's like a the gas from the crowd. And everyone kind of turns to the queen, and she sh and she just starts laughing. She just like yes! she like almost like doubles over. She's laughing so hard. Oh, she's got some bugs. And like oh. just this wild tittering laugh, and like all of her subjects seeing that it's okay start laughing. Uh, and then oh, Copper Creek pissed. just like fumes. But slowly sits down and like crosses his hand, his arms in front of his chest, just staring death at you. Um, we should have started with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was risky, but I decided to. Pay I was gonna say, I don't think if I hadn't rolled a six, I don't think it would have worked. Exactly. <laughs> um, she kind of dries her eyes after laughing. She says, "Oh, that was quite amusing, but we must proceed on." And she reads through the scroll some more, and she says, Ah, here we are. Proceeding on, we wonder of the Illuminati's role in this tale. <clears throat> we have heard that you made compacts with them while under our service, and yet did raid and attack their holdings. The Illuminati, in our royal opinion, are a den of snakes and vipers, biting and clawing at one another, and we shiver to think of our poor messengers being caught up in their venomous machinations. Already we have heard from our ambassadors to the Lux Victrix that some in the Illuminati mutter discourteously due to your involvement in their affairs. So we wonder for what purpose you involved the Illuminati, and how much of our affairs did you discuss with them? I'm not saying anything. Uh, <laughs> no, I I think this one's on you. I think this, I, th I think this one's on Bishop. I yeah. literally can't be. I can't. I am fully oh, yeah, stressed. And and also, you know, she's not really pleased with Bishop at the moment. You know what? <laughs> so I, I think, think I always protect them. her from the from the consequences. By the way, I think. I think Mouse uh, is going to push Bishop to do this. If, Bishop, if, if, if you take this stress and you get trauma, it'll be trauma against Mouse. But I love him. Okay. I know, you, but you, I, but you I think take Mouse... You trauma for her, but like, <coughs> how, how it works in the game is if you... If Bishop takes an action and, like, there's a consequence, 
to resist <clears throat> that consequence, someone else can step in and protect Bishop and take kind of the role and the accumulated stress for her. I will say that Mouse will do that for you if you fail. Okay. I think... Um... Okay, I'm trying to think of how to word this so I don't piss off the queen. I think Bishop steps forward and says, uh, Your Highness, um, like many... Hold on, let me think. Like many groups, sometimes you have to uh, use certain contacts to get ahead. Um, we merely have talked with the Illuminati as uh, using them to further your purposes, your goals, uh, the, the missions you've set us out to do. Um, there's been no information shared with them. They are merely a means to your ends. Uh, and uh, we really have no loyalty to the Illuminati. And you can, and I think you can add that our, one of our policies that we've been following is that we, we don't share secrets, we gather secrets. Yes, we, yeah, I say that. We don't share secrets, we gather them. Okay, go ahead and make your roll. <clears throat> All right. Oh boy, there's like nothing I can add to this, can I? No. Uh, you could spend intel to add dice. I don't know how I would. Can you? Oh, no, never mind, that's only for uh, resisting consequences. Yeah. Okay. You can use intimacy. If you fail it, you could also use it to upgrade your position. I don't know that that would help. I, I, I'm more worried about stress than my position. Okay. Can I spend intimacy? Would you guys mind? If you uh, fail, yeah. but you haven't failed yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. That doesn't like add bonus. Okay. All right. I'm rolling. I hit submit. A four. 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 Not bad. It's a mixed success. It's not a fail. Yeah. So you do succeed, um, but it is going to tick up the queen's disfavor by two unless it's resisted. Oh Jesus! Do you I'll, I'll resist it. it? Okay. You, I will. You... I will resist it. Oh man. Um, I think Mouse is the one that adds at the end uh, that uh, Mouse Mouse steps forward and adds instead of Bishop. Um, uh, Your Highness, we as uh, as a group of messengers um, have agreed uh, upon a set of, uh, of rules, and one of our rules is that we we gather secrets uh, sometimes from other factions in the city, um, but we don't share those secrets with any of the other factions. Um, we make an effort to keep things under wraps and to um, use our connections to further the goals of those we work for, which is you. Okay. Um, and Ed is right. You can uh, spend an intel to get a bonus die if you, when you're resisting this consequence, if you'd like. But I would have gonna... to roll a six and... No, no, no. This is for mouse. Oh, okay. It and is this, is this resolve? Resolve. Yes. All right. Um, yeah, I'll use an intel. Okay. Um, um, what information should we say that helps you out here? I mean, it could just be flashing back to Ramla, like telling you the correct way to do this. Yeah, I think that's fine. Um, I, I think that's the only thing that really makes sense at this point. Okay. So that's a bonus. Oh god. It could also be us, like, getting our stories straight type of thing. Yeah, yeah. All right, here we go. Ooh, six. Yay. Woo. Clean. Woo. All no right. one takes any stress. Yep. <coughs> Me, Rebecca, the player, have taken many, many stress. Many For this particular stress. item. Yeah. All right. Uh, she nods and says, We are grateful for your subtlety and diligence. Uh, and we would caution our loyal messengers again. Do not stray too close to the Illuminati. Uh, lastly, or no, not lastly. We got a couple more of these to do. All right. 
Oh my god. We also wonder at the involvement of the librarians. Who did, long ago, torment and trouble our most serene court? Who have heaped insult upon us, unjustly <clears throat> persecuted our subjects, and even now may yet plot against us? And yet, curiously, we have heard that you, too, struck accords with them, and even led them in an assault against our brethren, wayward though they may have been. A high charge, and our heart sinks to hear that it may be true. Still, we are generous and are, eager, and are eager to hear our beloved messengers explain how and why they did so deal with the ancient enemy and only lately friend of our two noble factions. While our anger has waned in recent centuries and our grace is most certainly as boundless as the leaves of the fall, the ember of our distrust for the librarians has not yet smoldered and, ex and extinguished. Chiefly, our concerns are to the risk our court is placed in, to have the librarians familiar with our <clears throat> affairs. And secondly, it does irritate and trouble us to be, if the tales are to be believed, placed at all in the book reader's debt. Mouse is not handling this one. I feel like this is a Stephen... For an acting. Um, yeah, Stephen will talk up. will speak up. Um, I'm trying to figure out how I can use finesse for this. Um, Say it gently. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you do amazing acrobatics. <laughs> yeah. Uh, our our interpretive dance. Our interactions with librarians have been. <laughs> only in so much as to use them against a common foe. They, we, we do not favor them any more than, or we, we do not favor them over the court, over your court, and would never stoop to do so. Is that bullshitty enough? That is pretty mm -hmm. bullshitty, and we like it. Uh, yeah, so go ahead and roll. Uh, risky, some, yeah, risky standard. Still risky. risky. That was finesse. kind of the Illuminati argument. Oh. It, it has Six. a little more emphasis of like the emphasis I got, got from that. There's is, some, there's some ass, kick, ass kissing there's in there some as ass well. Ass kissing, and there's some putting down of the librarians. So yeah. that that works out well. Um, she kind of laughs a little bit at that, and she says, "Oh, jester." To hear you speak ill of the librarians does put our mind and thoughts at ease. I can't help but look forward to the times you will tell me more in the coming days. Very well. We shall let it pass. I'm just going to keep leaning into this, <laughs> lying directly to the queen's face. <laughs> See how far it gets you. All right. Yep. It's not a lie. It's like a... It's, it's a finessing of the me. truth. Exactly. It's it's a I gently massaged the truth until it became what I wanted it to be. Okay. Oh, I don't like that language at all. That's just history. Nah. All right. Um We turn at last to Oakenheart, our wayward kin, at whose feet your tale does lay the blame for our misfortune. Did we gain any favor for that? Uh, no, <clears throat> again, that's a, oh, the, these are gotcha, specific the other questions. Yeah, gotcha, other okay, thing. sorry. I apologize for removing, for interrupting. No, it's wor no worries. While we understand that Oakenheart did stray, we wonder at our messenger's decision to dispatch him without our most serene contemplation. Would it not have been better, we wonder, to take him alive and make him account to his queen for his <laughs> sins? Even if our justice had been to take his head, we would have at least enjoyed to hear his tongue wag, if only to beg our mercies and confess the identities of his accomplices. <laughs> and, and, and the echo bit, well, they're dead too. <laughs> <laughs> I think this one's hardcore acting. Hardcore. Yeah. 
She's, right, you, you understand what she's asking. She's asking, why didn't you take him alive? Why'd you kill him? Why didn't you take him alive? Yeah. I because had all hear what's going on, guys. Oh, shit. I heard what I thought was acted a couple of times, but I'm struggling to... Wait. The queen wants to know why we didn't kill... Uh, or why we killed Oakenheart. Ash, are you... What's going on? I don't know. Something happened to my internet where I just... My whole computer just froze. Or whole Discord mm -hmm. just froze. Can you like, hear us now? I can hear you. Well, yeah, I just answered your question. But yes, I can hear you. Okay. Okay, cool. Seems okay. The, the queen What's wants to know... Okay. The queen wants to know why mm -hmm. we killed Oakenheart, why we didn't take him alive. Because if we took him alive, we could have gotten more information out of him. I think this is a you question to answer. Yeah, he was trying to kill us. It was self-defense. Can I say it real quick? In, in the echo, Bishop says... Oh, so now she's okay when we take people alive for in information. We could have dropped Oakenheart off in the bathroom, too. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> nice. Um, Afton is just going to say, um, uh, it was never the... Uh, we never uh, went in there planning to to kill Oakenheart. We intended to destroy, uh, destroy his trade, uh, destroy the actual drugs, Um uh, and you know, do away with uh, uh, do away with the entire business. But the only reason we killed Oakenheart was because he was trying to kill us. Um, if there was a way at that time to take him alive, uh, we would have. Um, in the end, the, the fatal blow was mine, and it was in essence an act of mercy. He was dying slowly. Um, uh, he was dying slowly uh, and painfully, uh, so um, so I, I decided to show him mercy. Okay. Tell her about the bomb. Yeah, that wasn't him, though, was it? That was the other guys. Mm -hmm. It might have also been in circumstance because, like, the idea was there was a bomb there and you needed to get out fast. But that too, yeah. I forgot about the bomb. But yeah. But I was just going with the whole act of mercy and well, that's the room killed him. That's well, which bomb? The, one that, the bomb that was already there or the bomb that I brought? Shh, don't, talk bomb. Bomb. don't talk we about that bomb. Don't talk about that bomb. We didn't know that you could hear the echo. Shh. <laughs> All right. <coughs> um, Consult, I guess? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, still risky. Still standard. Risky standard. Oh, Fuck. no. <clears throat> could I use an intimacy to... Yes. Rock? Yeah. Uh, how are you using intimacy in this case? Well, I think actually, I think in this case, um, this is like es things escalate so quickly. Like, um, mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, the fact that we went in there, uh, we went in there and we killed uh, Oakenheart, that was all me. Um, and I think actually the final blow was just because I was pissed off at him. Like, I'm bullshitting the queen. I just didn't like the guy. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I bullshit the queen. It wasn't an act of mercy. I really wanted to kill him. And I think. I think Bishop knows that. Mm -hmm. um, so I I'm kind of going to say this. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of going to say this. I think, one, uh, we lose a, an intimacy and I get to re-roll. But also, we lose one of the ticks on our clock. No, that's okay. Yeah. Nah, don't worry about that. Okay, well, I'm not going to say that again. But yeah, okay. Yeah. So, like, I, I get what you're saying. Like, you think it would weaken your relationship. But, like, I feel like Bishop knowing... <laughs> that about you like even seeing you bullshit about it like it wouldn't necessarily like actually worsen your relationship at all okay right. i think, I think, I think, I think if if anything it makes bishop more aware of who she's dealing with yeah. and at, at some point we are all just trying to get through this fucking meeting like <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, that sounds like me at work i hope yeah. you guys are having fun with this by the way I really I, I'm just very stressed. <laughs> yeah, being stressed and not having fun are, 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 are mutually exclusive. Yeah. I think that's the way it goes. All right. Um, okay, so I'm, but this time I'm actually going to take a, I'm going to push myself. Okay. Um, Come on, buddy. Because I don't think I can afford to not. Uh, consort, risky, standard, bonus die. There you Six. go. Yeah! Nice. Well done. <clears throat> Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm about to have a heart attack. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> oh. All right. Uh, she nods and says, well, if it was an act of mercy, we are merciful. 
and we commend you for acting in our stead. <clears throat> Speaking, though, of his accomplices, your tale did indicate that those who tried to steal our Copper Creek did, in turn, attempt to steal our Oakenheart. We wonder as to the identity of these fiends, the nature of their collaboration with Oakenheart, the likelihood that they may yet strike again at our most serene and peaceful court, and what, perhaps, our beloved messengers might undertake to protect us from such villainy. So, in the echo, I'm going to say, these guys are Leviathan, right? No, no, no. No? I'm pretty sure they're Leviathan. They might be. But we... But they we don't know that. Be. No, this is what I'm saying. Like, I imagine Akkad thinks this at this point. Yeah. Because they're well, the same guys who attacked us at the market. They're the same guys who... Um, so the same guys who attacked us at the market at the, uh, and at the thing. And they're the guys that took... Um, what called I Rose now? Uh, Red what's the face? Um, Red Briar. Red, Red Briar, Briar yeah. Um, I think Akkad not put it together, but he has a suspicion that they're all the same person. It's just... It'd be too um, incoincidental, or how we say it, not to be. I am fine. I'm fine with what you're about to do, as long as you make it very clear that, that this is a suspicion. Oh, no, I'm not going to mention that. So my point is, is we think they're Leviathan. We're already going after Leviathan. Let's just tell them that we'll investigate this as well. Yeah. I'm not going to say that they're Leviathan. But actually, it's two objectives that actually get solved by the same thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that, that's what Acton says. He says, um, uh, the questions you have, uh, your highness, uh, are the questions we also have. Um, <clears throat> uh, 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 if, uh, you know, by your leave, we will investigate um, and uh, ensure that uh, whoever these people are uh, uh, aren't allowed to um, interfere uh, in your, I want to say, kingdom? Queen. Uh, realm? Realm. In your That's realm, fine. you know, in your realm or with your subjects again. Okay. So you're, pro so you're promising to investigate those people? And uh, investigate and let her know what we know. Yeah, let's find a name. I think that's what we should promise. We're not promising to take them down. We're promising to get identify them. them. Yeah. Identify them and their activities, and, and maybe say we have a suspicion. But no, I wouldn't even go that far because okay. if we're wrong, we just like we just told the people we're wrong. Yeah, all right, that's, that's fine. Fair. I'm, I'm. You're not even gonna roll for that because that was kind of an addendum onto the last thing. Uh, I just wanted to see if you guys would promise to do that. <laughs> all right, <laughs> set up a new quest list. Yep. <clears throat> Lastly, we come to the matter of our dust. The dust, which gives some of our children joy, but leads only others into the temptation of languor and excess. This dust, which was the cause of all these present troubles. Before, we did tacitly allow our servant Copper Creek to trade in this substance, so long as he obeyed our commandments. By his testimony, he did not shirk his duty, but only was robbed of it by one who had strayed. We may yet return it to him, the right to manufacture this dust. Or perhaps we shall ban it entirely from our court and lands, for the ill it has caused may outweigh its good. Still, there may be other possibilities, as yet unrevealed to us. <coughs> Therefore, we bid our messengers, who are intimately familiar with the substance, tell us, what do you make of it? How do you weigh its good and ill? And lastly, what would you, our trusted servants, advise us to do about it? Echo time. Like, it's like bullet time, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Echo time, this is what we should talk. I think they should say, like, don't, for fuck's sake, get rid of it, ban it. That... All right, Ronald Reagan. I'm um, not very funny, but, like, we should, ban, we, should ban, we should ban these drugs, right? I'm not crazy. <laughs> You can't, you can't prove that it can get into the hands of humans again. It's happened before, and that was with the Queen's permission uh, that he deals with it. Um, it's too risky, and it's, it sows discord. It, it can cause, uh, you know, it, it can cause, like, wars. Not, you know, wars, wars, but, like, drug wars. I say, 
legalize it but regulate it. I, you know. Oh, for fuck's sake! All right, let's, <laughs> not, let's not get into these like let's not get into real world politics because I agree with you there. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag, hashtag legalize fantasy. <laughs> legalize fairy dust. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I mean, I think, I think we take a vote. Um, mouse is yeah. mouse is mouse is under the same idea. Um, Mouse's Mouse's reasoning is that this stuff should not be. Um, I think Mouse's thought is that by the queen allowing it to propagate, she's giving her implicit uh, approval of it. Mm. Um, and I think not only that, but this is this is a a, a, a substance that is relatively harmless to people to, to the fae but by having it around it is very likely that it's going to get in, into the hands of people and if it gets in the hands of people you're risking exposure yeah that's mouse's thought so mouse says get rid of it <sighs> what if they just kept it in you know certain uh, fairy dust zones Okay. Oh, Jesus. I just realized what the parallel is here. I don't know what the parallel is here. I just. Uh, firearms? Oh, yeah, I guess. Oh. Yeah, sure. That's what we're going with. No, it's or drugs. different because <clears throat> it's like if like a, a portion of the population could not be hit by bullets. You know what I mean? That's It's not really the same. Because it's fine yeah. for them. That's a good point. I mean, let, let, for let me, me lay this out is, some more of your me, options here. Um, well, for me, really, really quick. For uh -huh. me, fairy dust, fairy dust is the equivalent for us, like alcohol. Like it, it's only harmful if you take a whole lot of it, or if you do it over, oh, do a lot of it over over an extended period of time. But if you give it to a child, that child is likely going to die. <laughs> All right. Or have a really good party. Humans are children background. in this situation. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so again, okay. just so to clarify your options a bit more, like I wanted to leave it open ended for you guys, but uh, so if you come with your own ideas, that's fine. But like, again, she can ban it outright. She can give it back to Copper Creek. You guys could take it over. That's my other thought. Was just like if we want to go the other. Or you could like turn it over to someone else, or anything in between. So there is an opportunity in this as well. What about my friend T? T could take care of it. T could control it. I don't think we want T and the Queen to have anything to do with each other at the moment, do we? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you I mean, for Glimwing. It it would very much help T out. He would probably <clears> be really grateful, and like he would be. He would be a reliable friend and probably like a reliable source of income as well. And if we were managing him, it would be a lot easier because we would be his bosses. Exactly. Yeah, that's my other so point. That's, so that's can, my other thing. Yeah. So we can make sure it's only give, it's only being given to people that won't die when they take it. The double-edged sword of that is you're now responsible for Teague and this whole thing, so you have to. Like, yeah, protect. and also drug dealers. <laughs> well. Fantasy legal drug, drug dealers. Legal pharmacists of recreational well, fantasy drugs that fairies use. My the thought would be, My thought is that if we were to do this, if we if we, if we were going to, 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 to take over this business, we would have dens. And that would be where we use it. That way it's make we make sure that it's only being given to, to Fay. I kind of like it. It's complicated, yeah. but I like it. The thing is, Ash likes it. Acton doesn't. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this out right now. If you had something that could incredibly easy easily reveal something that you're trying to keep hidden at all costs and and your options were continue having to deal with it or <clears throat> not ever have to deal with it ever again. But complicated is fun. This is well and not to mention um, this is just this is just like a real life drug discussion. Making it illegal yeah. doesn't mean it goes away. Right. True. What if okay, what no, if no. we uh, compromise, we have Copper Creek's experience with 
a partner of ours, uh, a young entrepreneur named Teague, who is familiar with the, with the business. They partner up and they keep it out of the hands of humans. Out of In dens. In dens. I, I would highly suggest you guys don't bring Copper Creek into this because he does not yeah. like you guys. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, would we like it more if we turn the business back? I thought that would be like a nice little olive branch. No, because we'll just try and take it back. Yeah, he, he's not going to be happy chafing under your even, rule. I'm going to point out here, Megan, even the GM's like, you know, if that happens, I'm going to try and take it back. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Rebecca. Like, it's a good idea, and I understand the instinct to compromise, but, like, if this is He's something you guys guy. are going to deal with, you're going to have to deal with it. Or fire and drugs and wolf. Well, the, another option would be, is it possible... Because, obviously, we're not in the mortal realm right now, right? Mm -hmm. So, why don't we just make it illegal in the mortal realm? Yeah. yeah. Just be like, make it punishable by death, if you bring it to the mortal realm, and even then, if you're not intending to distribute yeah. it or anything, it has just, to be used yeah. only in the Fey realm. Yeah, if you bring it to the mortal realm, it's it's punishable by death. Or you, but they also you can make they it also need more, someone to go ahead. Go ahead, Eric. You can make it even more restrictive and say only within dens that you control, only manufactured in you know the path underground where you are, <laughs> and that it never leaves the mortal realm. Because, like, you, and, that is something you can set forward. I was going to say only in, like, Goblin Market or something. Yeah. <laughs> I love, that. I I love this idea. Like, this is Ohio's the, medical marijuana program. Because <laughs> the, big, the, the biggest issue is that it got to the mortal realm. So mm -hmm. if you just make it so if it, it just can't enter the mortal realm, then... Actually, wait. We're dealing with fairies. Can't you just enchant it so it physically can't go to the mortal realm? I can try to do that. You can try. We can we can we can get mouse some more magic. Like can you is it possible to is it possible to ensorcel a concept? Uh you guys would be in charge of the entire manufacturer, <laughs> so you could enchant it during its manufacture. You could enchant the sauce, like the mushrooms. Yeah. And, and that, that way, way if what it, do you do with the mushrooms? And that way if it did end up in the public we would know it wasn't ours. Oh, shit. Like, it would take a lot of magic and it would take some doing, but it's possible. Guys, I'm like 90% sure my Discord is about to shut down for a second. Okay, well, if it happens, we love you. <laughs> there he goes. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it was just very sincere and I wasn't ready for it. Guys, are we about to become magic drug dealers? <laughs> no, we're about to become magic my drug whole, manufacturers. My whole thing Ma magic, magic drug entrepreneurs. Yeah, I think so. God. <laughs> we are so capitalism. Um, my whole thing was uh, with Teague and, and Copper Creek working together is passing it yeah. off on them and not us being involved. <laughs> yeah, what, what, no. what I'm, what I'm yeah. telling you, Rebecca, is like, I understand he that's would, your instinct, yeah. but I'm telling you there will be consequences of that. You will have to deal with that. Okay. <laughs> like, the the most Bye. pass it off on something else you could do is give it to Copper Creek, and, like, that's, like, <laughs> such a status quo thing to do, and it, like, it might become a problem later. Okay. Because this is definitely not going to become a problem later. <gasps> oh, God. But at least you'll get I something out this. of it. And I personally... As a role player, love this so much. And I, I will say, um, please, for the love of God, take Hi. take object as your new uh, as your new term. That way, if if we need to, we can scry drugs. Yes, I was going to say, is is a um, oh. are we really prescriptive about what the words are? Is there is there a list? There is a list, but um, it can be expanded. Oh my gosh, guys! If we if, if I just scry fairy dust, does that mean I get to see all the fairy dust throughout the entire city and use using it? Oh my god! That would be a lot of stress. <laughs> oh, that but that's fine. That sounds um, awesome. That would be massive magnitude in its scale, but um, uh, I I love it though. Oh my god! Basically, you know what that would be? That would be 
uh, Lucius Fox's like uh, mobile phone tracking thing in uh, the Christopher Nolan Batman movies. Yeah. I don't oh, see any yeah. way it could go poorly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so it sounds like you guys are pretty much in agreement. I mean, Acton's probably not thrilled about it, but is it three to one think, at this point? I think Mouse sells it to Acton as being, if we are in control of this, we are in control of it. It's going to exist regardless. As, as long, at least we know where it's coming from and what's happening with it if we handle it. Yeah. Ash agrees. Acton, Acton will get there. Yeah. Like at, like at least Acton will be like, Mouse says, trust me, essentially. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, better better that we're in control of it than some rando picking it up because they decided they wanted to make drugs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think we play this off as we accept it as like accepting a a burden and not as accepting like a an exciting job. Mm-hmm. All right, who wants to who wants to tell the queen? Not I. Go mouse. I think mouse. I think mouse will. I was like, who has the least stress? Mouse has four. That's nothing. Yeah, it shouldn't, I be think... the it shouldn't be the doc. So let's just hand Ma- it. Out. Mouse will take this. Yeah, and I think, like I said, Mouse will uh, suggest that that we take over this, uh, give the logistics that we just said that we would control it. I think Mouse starts off with saying, "I th- uh, like. I think you should enact some some measures to to regulate it. Uh, make sure that it stays within the um, the what are we calling it the Something underground. A den. The the, the path underground? underground is that what is that what we're calling it? It's called the path underground. The path underground. Uh, Mouse will say, you know, I think we, we, in order to make sure that that it doesn't get out there and risk exposing uh, the human world to our dealings, um, you need to regulate it. Uh, keep it within the path underground. Make sure it never leaves this place. Um, keep it out of the hands of humans, and um, and have somebody to administer it and make sure that it stays the way it is. Um, if your grace would accept this, uh, I would suggest that we take over that responsibility, um, that burden. Uh, the queen smiles and nods, and she says, um, "We are so grateful to our beloved messengers that they would take this responsibility. Uh, therefore, we shall grant you official monopoly on the sale of our fairy dust." Oh my God! Provided you do better to keep it from our mortal brethren and not allow it to be snatched away from you. And she kind of glares at Copper Creek. For the consequences shall fall upon you most direly, if it does. And with that, she nods to a few uh, 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 fairy men in like armor, uh, like old timey like knight's armor. And you notice that they've kind of like gone to either side of Copper Creek. <gasps> and they grab him by either side. And he instantly just like starts <sighs> begging like, no, no, my queen, please. I, I never meant to. And they drag him in front of you guys <clears throat> uh, and like hold him down on the ground in front of the queen. And she, for the first time, stops reclining uh, and, like, sits up straight very imperiously. And she says, watch closely, my beloved messengers, for the price that those who fail me shall suffer. Um, And so this is going to get a little dire, but... um, Gonna get they hold out Copper Creek's arm uh, and one of them takes out like a heavy ceremonial axe uh, and they bring it down on his arm, chopping it off. 
uh and basically yeah n they don't completely dismember him they just take his entire arm from the shoulder down and does said, he bleed well yeah of course we yeah, never know and i don't know if fairies bleed yeah, so. yeah 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 that's true uh fairies do in fact bleed you learn today and he screams uh and they drag him out of the room uh and they just kind of uh, leave the arm there. Uh, and the queen gets off her throne and comes down a few steps and she motions to Ramla. Uh, Ramla comes up to her. The queen hands her like this long piece of silk. Uh, and Ramla takes it and she says, send it away with our messengers. May it remind them of the penalties of failure. And Ramla nods very respectfully, wraps Copper Creek's arm up in the cloth, and then like, oh. kind of motions to you guys like, all right, it's time to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh my god! I... Oh no. Well. <laughs> oh no. You guys. This will be fun. I'm gonna do awesome stuff with that that arm, guys. Just so you know. <laughs> Are you gonna make the fingers move with like electricity? Oh, I'm gonna do so <laughs> much. <laughs> that is the most <laughs> bishop thing I've heard you say, <laughs> dude. I remember how we were talking about getting cohorts before. We're gonna have oh, our own oh, it. God. No, no, oh, sorry, no. Nice. You do sorry, no thing. Not it. Not it. Thing. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm I'm okay with that. I'm not okay with clowns. No, I, 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 I mixed up I mixed up cousin it and thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah that's my fault. Um, I think Bishop is just like eyes wide, fucking terrified as she throws her out. Not that we haven't God. seen like blood and gore, but we just watched this dude's arm get chopped off and then given to us mm -hmm. to remind oh you my. of the consequences. <laughs> Oh my. So yeah, so that was the session, guys. Oh. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> oh my god. What have we gotten ourselves into? Oh my god. Um, you guys uh, did very well, though. Uh, you will get all three of the boons you asked for. Woo! Yeah! Um, that was very well. Yeah. That did not feel very well. <laughs> I mean, like, you guys didn't actually lose anything. Um, <clears throat> yeah. you, know, you lost a few points of favor just because, like, there was, like, problems there, but, like, not so much as to take any of the boons away from you. It's just, you will be right at the status of getting those three boons. Okay. I will add those to our little section of thing at the bottom, just so everyone knows. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, um, so it was gain one keyword, secret tunnels, and obscuring wards. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think, and I think we can definitely accept the keyword object. That's fine by me. Okay. It just uh, made the most sense because because right now you have per, you have what person, mm -hmm. yep, and and hide and scry. So by adding another noun instead of another verb, it makes it so you now have four things you can do instead of having two things you can uh, instead of three things you can do to one thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So uh, what I what I need to know from you guys, uh. I think we might leave downtime and experience for next time. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, okay. But uh, I do need to know what your guys' next move is going to be. Um, you, could think, you could check out the Nicholas Street Jail that you were talking about before. Uh, you could follow up on one of these three things you agreed to do for the Queen. Uh, you could. You should probably go talk to Teague at some point. But that yeah, I was going to say... The second she gets back, she's gonna send a text to Teague like, "Hey, we need to meet up." Don't leave I've town. Got... Don't leave town. I was gonna say I've got... at this point, might as well bring him to the black side if he's working for us. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I think that we might not even be using the black side anymore, you guys. <gasps> Why? No, you are not getting rid of this fucking place. I love it because I feel like we're probably gonna need to have a space that's more easy, that's easier for us to access the uh, all the drugs that we're gonna be shipping and taking care of. It depends how feel, hands on we are. I feel Where like we find drugs that isn't a laser tag place. I feel like we might. We can. We are. We, 
okay, we do not bring the drugs outside of the, <laughs> the path underground. I know. <laughs> so I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, Bishop's door's ability, can that go across worlds? Or is it just within, like, she, could she make a door to the path underground? Or is it just to the mortal realm that she uh, can do stuff? No, it's if, if, she, if she has a door anywhere, if she, if she can see a door and, like, put, it, put the mark on it, then she can open that door and come out another one. It does. I do have to spend two stress to open any other door and come out that door. Yeah. Okay. Is is it so, possible for her to make permanent ones? Semi permanent. She can have up to three. Yeah, I can have up to three, and basically, I just like rub them off when I decide oh. not to have that door. Right now, we have a door to the block site, and we have a door to the police station in the bathroom. I think we should get rid of the police station one and build one to the door to the path underground. Well, then we got to go there, <coughs> wipe off the thing. I'll file another fake report. You can just walk into the bathroom. You can just Except, walk out, yeah. walk through that door, and like wipe it off. It's fine. Okay, we'll do that sometime. Mm -hmm. uh, if if it's not in a very conspicuous place, you can just remove it without any trouble. Um, okay. But yeah, I need to know like yep. what score your guys are going to go into, or like what you're going to like spend the majority <clears throat> of your time doing. I think let's start investigating the vibes. Like we got this Stygian motherfucker. Yeah, I think I investigating the low ten. I think I think investigate low ten overall with Leviathan our focus. Okay, so you're gonna look into Leviathan. All right. yeah, what about that? that uh, what about the magic murderer? I think he's still kind of uh, on, the, on the on on a secondary burner because he hasn't okay. really popped up again. I'm I'm keeping him in mind, but he he he's he hasn't yet weaved back into the story. Okay. okay. Uh, so yeah. So talking to Teague, uh, okay. investigating okay. Leviathan. Anything <clears throat> else? I don't think so. Think of anything. Relieve <laughs> stress. Relieve stress. Yeah. <clears throat> Can we do an XP tonight and leave downtime for next time? Uh, yeah. I think I have enough time to do XP. All right. Let's just get through it quick. All right, um, and we're gonna continue to do the way I've been doing XP before. I was like, do we do we, we could kind of just do our own XP, couldn't we? We kind of know at this point. Well, the the, yeah. the thing is, is like I have to tell you what how much okay. XP you get because like, while I trust you, I don't trust you that much. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Uh, that's fair. I'm three levels. All right. So, crew advancement. Acquire a new asset, contact, resource. Oh, boy, you did. Um, I will give you one for that. Uh, contend with challenges above your current station, most definitely. Uh, bolster your crew's reputation or develop a new one. Yes. All right. And you guys uh, have an advancement banked then. And express the goals, drives, inner conflict, or essential nature of your crew. You guys feel like you did that? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Like, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I think Taylor Conflict, yeah. definitely. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Okay. So you guys have one advancement. We'll talk about that next time. Uh, and, yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's go to Bishop. Bishop, uh, Me you next. marked your desperate actions, right? <coughs> I don't think I had any. Okay. Um, um, it was just Nick. Okay. I'll mm -hmm. mark off your XP. Earn XP when you address a challenge using speed, foresight, or just in the nick of time. I don't know that that necessarily happened today, but the next one I've got one. Uh, for expressing your beliefs, drives, heritage, or background? Yeah. Uh, one of my big beliefs has always been, like, ev every faction is a means to an end, and even though I was kind of, like, pushing <laughs> that to the court, like, oh, well, it, it, the Illuminati and the left are just, like, a means to an end. No big deal. Um, I also believe that about the court to an extent, but still. Okay, I'll say one from that. Uh, okay. Struggling with issues from your vice relationships or traumas? I don't <clears throat> think so. No, I don't think so. Okay. All right. Yeah, I don't think we have a, we had an opportunity for traumas at this point. Yeah. 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 So just one XP per bishop this time, unfortunately. That's okay. I'm just going to put right in my playbook advancement. All right. As well. Whoops. Uh, all right. Stephen O'Neill. Uh, address the challenge using tinkering, mechanical ingenuity, or artifice magic. 
Uh, for the first time ever, no, I don't think I did. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay. I do think you got the next one, though, for expressing your beliefs. I think I right got right. the shit out of that one. <laughs> yeah, because you expressed, you know, Ramla wanting Ramla to stick around for your children oh. and also, like, being willing to actually sacrifice for that. Yeah. All right. So that's two more XP for you to spend. Mm -hmm. Uh you struggled with issues from your relationships or traumas during this session? Do you think you did that? Um, I think, I mean, the, the, I think this kind of goes back to the last one with, with wi willing to, uh, to sacrifice part of who he is and, and his, his ability to do things going forward to make sure that the people that he cares about are, are, uh, not put into what he perceives as a, a difficult situation and to also make sure that um, his child has uh, a, a little bit more steadiness um, at the cost of, again, his own yeah. uh, uh, freedom. Yeah, so one from that. And uh, also, I think you should try and get Sandra to stick around for like half an hour because I want you guys to role play him telling Myrie what he did. Well, if we, if we start on time Please. next next time, we definitely can because she doesn't have to leave until noon. Um, yeah. Excellent. So if we start like at 11 or earlier. Then yeah, Eric, I can't probably... believe you were late. Yeah, I know. I'm such an asshole. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go to Acton. Uh, earn XP when you address the challenge using flash style and a little bit of the old ultra violence. Nope. Nope. Unfortunately not. Uh, yeah, express your beliefs, drives, heritage, or background? I think I did that a couple of times this time. So, uh, I think, um, definitely when I started saying, well, I actually told the queen, I've done this before. Very good at this. Um, <clears throat> and then, um, uh, I think also... Uh, a couple of times, my sort of my background as an officer came out sort of mm -hmm. dealing with the. I know it's not court, but dealing with like authority and that kind of stuff as well. Yeah. Okay. So two from that, um, and struggling with issues from your vice relationships during this session. I think I struggled with issues with my vices or relationships. Did I? Is anyone got, is anyone disagree? I don't think I did. Not particularly. I don't. I don't think so. All right. Yeah. So just Although I do just get a playbook advancement. Yay. All right. Way to go. Uh, mouse. Ooh, boy, mouse. All right. Earn XP when you address a challenge with technological <laughs> aptitude or technical finesse. Not really. I think, I think only when they were uh, explaining what they did um, to, uh, the to steal the information from the police department. All right. So, yeah, one from that. Um you definitely express your beliefs, drives, heritage, or background. Oh, did I? A whole lot. <laughs> right. Yeah, so two from that. Uh, struggling yeah. with issues from your vice or relationships during this session. I think you did. Yeah, a lot, yeah. All right. All right, so a total of four from that, I think. Um, All right, cool. Cool. All right, and that's the game, guys. Boop, boop. Thanks so much for playing. <laughs> Oh, man. I, I love the queen, and I'm queen. very terrified of her. She's pretty great. I I really enjoyed writing her. Oh. She is terrifying in the best possible way. Ten out of ten would worship. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! All right. Before oh this, my god! Before the aid, the rating on this podcast creeps any higher. Let's no, I meant as a queen. You're you're got some dirty minds. I meant as queen. <laughs> okay. All I, right. I, Jesus. <laughs> Fair enough, actually. Yeah, creeper. Get your, get your minds out of the gutters. I literally was in the chat going, 10 out of 10, let's let her step up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Talk you to guys you guys later. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye, guys.